pick 60. No, 59. 59. Yeah, oh, yeah, have 60s six, next week. The Not 60s. Vanna. What goes on? Let's start. Yeah, yeah, let's start. Yeah, dog. So, what, like, what exactly happens in the 60s? Because last time you said the 40... What? The dirty 30s? Dirty 30s. Was, was that the last time we... No, no, no. no dirty th- 30s and naughty 40s. Yes. And the 50s? Uh, iffy know. 50s. What the fuck is iffy? I've heard that word in rap songs. Iffy. I know iffy from... Uh, what's this thing? Power. You know iffy? Nah. Some other gorgeous Mexican girl. Like she's a drug dealer. Oh, nah. imagine like a Mexican drug dealer, which is like 21. I fuck with power, but like one of the dopest lines that I've ever heard in rap music was by Raz. He said, I want the throne and then I'm ghost. Like I'm Omari Hardy. <laughs> Think this about it. Dog, this guy, okay, I want the, the throne, then I'm ghost. Like I'm Omari Hardwick. I'm for the hours it's too like much. Russ got bars, dog. I feel like, I mean he's dope. He's dope, and yeah, no, no lie. He is, but I feel like he's overrated. He's crazy. I think it's a bit of both. Nah. He's overrated dope and rapping, underrated. But like, do you wanna listen to somebody which is so big headed? He's an artist. About he's not him. a rapper. No, 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 no. He's not he, a rapper. You no, know, but he's big headed though. About him doing everything. Like yo. <laughs> I was the one which did my CD covers. I produced the beats. Produced I rapped it. it. I mastered it. Yeah. And then you know what? I distributed it. But think about it though. Yeah, he, How many that, people do you know that do that? J. Cole can do it. J. Cole? Yeah. He can Dog. produce. Dog. Does he, he mix not... and master his own things? Yeah. No, he doesn't. He does. No, he doesn't. Nah, no, I don't think he mixes. Ah, he does He doesn't. produces. J. Cole. We Dog. know he produces. Dog, did you not... Produced, also... mixed, mastered. That's J. J. Cole can do all Dog. of that. J. Cole doesn't even produce all of his songs. He produces some. But he can. Do Russ it. produces all of them. But like, who has a better catalog? I give it to J. Cole. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. I give it to J. Cole. Sometimes the, the creative process of music, you need to add people. But I like the fact that you're comparing Russ to J. Cole. Like a real goat, you know, not these small boys. Of course, Russ is good at it. He, he can rap. Like, he, dog, I, I loved Russ's... When I found out about him a while ago, like 2016 or something, I loved yeah. his music. But the problem is, I just felt it was repetitive. Yo, but he has, you know, he's the most versatile artist because he has like 300 songs out. Ne? He has the most output out of everybody. That guy has like 400 songs out, dog. Mm. And like, it's different, so many different styles that it's insane. The yeah. output is so crazy. Ne? And then the variety in the styles, mm. like from singing to rapping. And then he produced all of them, dog. It's crazy, bro. And then he wrote all of them. Ah, uh, you know, he's dog. I, I mean, for me, I don't. Like, obviously, we're going to have to give you props, you know, for doing everything. For having the ability to, you and know what I'm saying? And still making it. And actually making it, sure. Right. And as but an for independent me, artist, imagine, for me, imagine he did all of that independently, dog. Mm. Dog, dog, think about that. He owns that whole catalog, dog. I mean, it's dope, but that's the that's what I say is no, like the independent ah, part. Let's be honest. Okay, but not, ah, not being like a rapper. There's not a single chance a rapper independent. Yeah, yes. But did he produce, mix, master, all of that shit? But nah, like but success, that's my thing. He's the thing that I, I, I respect Russ for is that him being independent and being, you know, a boss in that sense. Yeah. Not necessarily that he does everything, mixing, mastering, uh, producing. Like, I mean, talk, but think about how the fact that, that he's that. such a one-man, like, operation. Machine, you know? yes. Multi million dollar operation. One man. Not one man, though. I mean, but he I is think, a manager. I think, I think, I think the one-man-ness kind of makes him it limits him because he, he brags about that so much that he has to stick to that and then a lot of the times he can't grow as an artist because you need to grow with other people. You need critique. You need, you need to be critical. Every time he tries to like start working with the industry, he just ends up caving back into his like uh, lone wolf season, you know? Don't you think that's also, for me, it strikes me as somebody which has a lot of insecurities. Yeah, I, I do think it has to, is that a lot to do with... No, he's right. Just think about it. If you work alone a lot, the minute you work with people, you have to... You, you withdraw yourself. That means you think about how you, your output is when you're around So people. what you're saying is that you actually just don't know how to work with people. Nah, it's more or less just you think about it a lot. You overthink what you're producing. Because, mm. for example, some people... Some artists won't go into studio with an... They'll send you verses. Like, for example, I won't come to... Rhea has a track he wants me to be on. A lot of the people want to go to, let's say, Rhea studio and vibe with him, you know, in case there, you know. But then I decide to, you know, send me the song. 
I'll send you the verse. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a I thing know, of, yeah, I know people it's like just, that. It's just like how you work, your working process. And sometimes those insecurities are good. Sometimes they're not, you know. Sure. It can help you self-critique. Okay, now I, I get you, I get you. But sometimes it just, it hinders you. Because Drizzy Drake will be like, yo, Ross, Fana, I see what you're doing. And I don't want to, I don't want to jack your flow. And then the whole culture just be like, yo, hey, Drake again. But I, I'll, I'll bring you into studio. And then Ross doesn't show up. He does the MT. Jiga <laughs> Halfway from halfway. Jasper's house. and says, yay. I know, you believe that cast. story? What? Yeah, I know. MT. Yeah, I'm I, saying, do you believe it though? What story is this? I believe. Uh, MT, uh, Casper hit up uh, MT for feature. Uh, and then MT was vying one man to, to Casper's house. house. And then on his way there, skirt. Raf, Raf <laughs> just told him to skirt, skirt. Yeah, yeah. He's what? producer. Raf, the producer. He said, told him, don't go there. Yeah, he's like, are you sure, sure that you really want to do this? Going to this guy's place. You don't know what tomorrow headlines will come out saying, this happened, that happened. Yo, you, Raf oh, is the biggest bitch. What? what? No, no, dog. dog. It's how's, how's, how's that MT, being dog. a bitch, dog? That's begging your home. Plus, this is the time when everything is just going bad for MT, dog. And you must remember, Casper, I don't think... They were going to work on music, right? Yeah. yeah. Nah, so but, it's okay. That, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Casper... I don't take it past Casper to use a exactly. young headline to push the song, you know? Like what? At MT's expense. Like, like what? Yo, MT, when I was doing music with MT, he was like, he had to go but, so high that... So and they got... Yeah, you know, <laughs> Kesper, to be yeah so you're right. Like, you can like say that. So that's, that, you, that's, so that's what you guys music. think of Casper. Yeah, hmm? for real, dog. Dog, Casper is a marketing machine, dog. Anything and, and, works. And, and, and he's so don't you look at when they both have a hit? Nah, dog. Don't you look at the expense. aftermath. At MTS expense. When they both have a hit. Dog, let's look at Casper, dog. Everyone that has a hit... Don't look at Casper like an evil genius. Everyone that has a hit with Casper. After Casper, it's like Casper sucks... The, the, the cloud out of them and keeps it moving. And keeps it... Um, Look at Zola. So what about the, the features that he does? Mm, like yeah, features? you're right, dog. Look at Zola. Look at Zola. What did he so do? He was up with Zola when it was out. And now, she stays up and Zola... Just... Do you not have, do you not have realized people yeah. want Casper to take care of everybody? No. No. <laughs> what? We didn't say you nah, must take dog, care People of just them, don't dog. like people which want to work with you when... It only benefits you. It benefits you. them. Isn't that the whole game? Nah. Not only, some, not only. Some, that's why people like MT would refuse to do a feature. Because it's like, you want to work with me. But he was going to do it. Yeah, but he refused, you know. Just, no, someone told him not to do it. Nah, he, he asked him some questions that made himself reflect. And you guys literally just said he was like, yo. Nah. He, what, yeah, he that's, 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 that's what we said. He must watch the thing. He says, he asked him some stuff like, yo, are you sure about this? Are you sure about that? He didn't tell him, yo, don't go. So what about what about the artists that have been around Casper that have benefited? Like who? All of them. No, but mention one. Gemini Major. Everyone leaves running away, dog. It's like. But it's you don't realize that you know? they leave with something. Like what did they leave with? Seho wants what, with their talents. With their name. Didn't, didn't Seho want also? Didn't he take thingy for unpaid? Didn't he? Uh, he didn't pay him. They leave with the name. But the, if. He, they, go, they leave with a name, but they're coming back to like take him to court because he didn't pay royalty fees, whatever those kind of stuff are. Isn't that the whole game, dog? Nah. <laughs> like, like, Kespa, isn't that but the it's not game? Grand, right? What I'm saying like, is, that, that, you defending that, it like it's okay. You, and you also, the other thing is, it's, it's, it's a common thing. Just the other, a, a year ago, uh, DJ somebody wanted money from a uh, Samsung campaign from Casper. Yeah, yeah, from Casper. Yeah. Like, look at this. But well, didn't he? Didn't they say he must uh, pay? I saw some headlines saying that apparently. Uh, dog, this shit is confusing because he's friends with DJ somebody. They literally yeah, always around each other. I don't, I don't know other what's going on seven. there. Dog. What do you think is going on there? So how does that work? I have no idea because I've seen that. What you what you talking about? Yeah, I've seen it. Dog. Like these guys are literally everywhere together in every video. Right. And then when it's time, like these newspapers are making shit up, dog. What are we doing? Uh, let me. Fetch them, then we continue. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys can continue. Oh, yeah, yeah, dog, but how does that work, well? What? Like, dog, you suing me, dog. <laughs> but we homies. But but we bemming cigars together. Dog. But maybe it's a Casper and AK, uh, AKA And that's the thing, thing. That's, 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 that's the narrative that you guys run with. Like, like you don't see the people that he's close with, they just worked with in the past. So only the people that he has lived, like, look, he was close to DJ um, somebody. But DJ even though somebody, you can see, it seems like some weird shit's going on. Abidoza. Abidoza, dog, how long do you think, ah, come dog, on. The Abidoza, dog, you know come the on. crazy thing about Abidoza? Ah, it's just no, the, no, no, no. Do you know what's the crazy thing about Abidoza? 
He could have gotten a, a summer. Dog. He could have. Dog. But Casper still angry. He didn't give it to him, dog. Why, did, why can't every dozer get rid himself? Nah, but the what song. What do you mean? Come on, it's already nah, there. No, the, no, ah. the oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, big, that's big spite. That's so spiteful, dog. Come on. No, it's you gotta just, admit it's that. Just the no, fact no, that no, no, Ria, Ria. You gotta it's admit. It's Casper's song. No, dog. you gotta admit. It's Casper's song. No, think about it. You gotta admit that I would stop everything that's going on right now because of winning some sort of like sum or something because I have an issue with just NK. He has summers. He so yeah, so exactly. Think about himself. What Can about Ebi Doza's first summer? Can you see, dog? What about Ebi Doza's first summer? Go do it yourself. Nah, I did dog. it myself. So who did the beat? He didn't do it. See, Tandana wasn't done by himself. No, I'm saying he's won his own summers. Nah, yeah, dog. He just couldn't also, take that. That just shows. We'll he go couldn't to the take it. You just dog. have the other pros have it, dog. Why he couldn't he take it, It's crazy dog. way how Yola took him like this about Casper when he literally just saved SA Hip Hop with one verse. Wait. What? Wait. Uh, that you see, I said Hip Hop with one verse. What? Ah, he saved SA Hip Hop. What song, dog? With one verse. No, 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 no. Let's break down. Did you hear what he said? What did he say in that verse? It's a savior moment. What did he say in that verse? It's a Superman moment. He said, first no one can save Hip Hop with one verse. It's Batman. Let me tell you something. At this point. Let me tell you something. This is the one thing I agree with Aries on the statement. He said on, I think on Twitter, he said, Aries said that some people look at uh, SA Hip Hop as a way of making money and some of us, it's a lifestyle. And I see Aries look at it as a lifestyle. Casper looking of, of a way of making money. Like, think about it. So that Kasper, verse wasn't dope? Which one? That verse let's wasn't down, dope. Let's break down that verse. Ooh, ah. That, that wasn't ooh, dope. Ah, that ooh, ah verse. You heard the song. I know you heard the song. Did you even hear the verse? You just got excited when he said... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I heard dog, the it's verse. The same dog. thing when when Drake I heard just the verse says, and he's yeah. talking his you shit. You see when Drake dog. says yeah, dog, everyone just says yeah, it's a hit. Dog, I just heard Drake the saying, verse and he's talking his shit. What is he saying? He's like none of y'all can fuck with me. I made more money than all of y'all. I inspired all of y'all. He said he inspired Fuka. Ah, dog, dog, bro. He did inspire Fuka. Fuka was running around him. Because he's the gold. Give it to him. He's the gold. Let me see this verse. You see that verse, man? We back here, Vela now. Dog verse. No, that's the one. Like the <laughs> Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Dog. Yeah. Stan Chi. I stand dog. the real goats. I stand Drake. AKA? Drake. AKA. I stand AKA. Kespa. I stand Maporisa. I AKA. stand goats. But the goats only. <laughs> so because those are the goats. AKA. AKA is not a goat. Who else? AKA is not a goat. Ah, AKA is not a goat. Ah, <laughs> dog, you said AKA. I'm sure like eight AKA times. Let me, let me AKA, say AKA fell off when he did all that weird shit so, with cocaine so and all these true. things. So it's going to be a dope episode, <laughs> this one. That's why he fell off. <laughs> That's why he fell off. <laughs> what? <laughs> when he started sugar. running around all that white powder and all that shit. <laughs> that booger sugar puns. icon. No, no way. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 this Casper goes on to that verse to say, y'all look... First, he talks about taking that two shots ne, of Biliato. Ne? Yeah. Okay, sharp. That's that's a flex. You, you saw know? that they when added him on the director, the, the, what is it called again? CIPC. Yeah, CIPC. After. After they No, found but he's there now. Nah. <laughs> yeah, but you can be but added as a director, but you're not a shareholder. Or no. you own a minimal shareholder. Doc, a director. It doesn't show even a percentage. A director, Still, you are there. Dog, a director is literally. But a you weren't there. Why weren't you there? Think the, about it. So the fact that he's there now it doesn't Director mean anything title, to you. Ah, <laughs> but when he was not there, it was a big deal. When he was not there, it was a big deal. But when he's there, it's not a big deal. Okay, but think about it. <laughs> Come on, you're yeah. a huge end, bro. He's not there this week. No, 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 no. He's not there this week. And then next week, when he turns on the dog, when he turns, then all of a sudden he's there. He went back to. Pass me near, please, dog. <laughs> this is me on Twitter. Said, dog, what happened? Why wasn't it there in the first place? Dog. That's what we're saying, bruh. Dog, who knows, bruh? You know, dog. But yeah, Vele, you know, Ray knows. Yes, Stan Lee knows. Nobody bro. knows. It's business things, dog. Of course, but if it's like, your company from the start, aren't you supposed to be on the director's We list? don't know what's going on inside the company. All we know that Biliato is okay. Casper's. No, we don't know that. We do. We don't. He's never sure. So Kasper, Dog, you know the Kasper is making more Kasper, money than all Kasper, these niggas, bro. When it comes to Casper, he wants to show off. And then when people ask for ownership, uh, proof for ownership, then he wants to be like, why are you guys asking me this? You know, black hate. Dog, do not show off if you're not going to be ready to prove it. Right. Do but he's, make, go he, and go he's making more money than all these niggas, though. I, we don't know about that. No, you can clearly see. How? In the lifestyle. How? He has the biggest lifestyle. Ha, dog, you know, he does. Dog, dog, yeah, you no, know, he does. He does. Oh, he does but, have the the biggest lifestyle. Lifestyle. but the lifestyle can be fake, dog. Yeah, but he has the it biggest one. Even if it's fake, he has the biggest one. So out of the so it's out, a big because we all know they are fake anyway. 
But in, ten, in terms of the fakeness, <laughs> he is the biggest fake one. He is the biggest <laughs> fake one. <laughs> He's He's you know, all the niggas have kept Wi Fi. He has uncapped Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but we know it's Wi Fi. <laughs> but it's capping. <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the, day, the story. It's oh, capping. this one's uncapped. Yeah, it's But uncapped. they're all capping. <laughs> but they're all capping. So, 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 what I'm saying in the first verse, okay, I'm not going to break it down word by word because I'm not reading it. I'm just remembering what he said. So, he talks about Bilia to take two shots. On the rocks, on Matapa. On I Matape, like that. yo. I, I, I like, like that. Oh, I like shit. that. He's know? like, Mama Tape. <laughs> I'm like, I need dog. This, this guy takes Twana to a whole new level. Dog. It makes it cool. I'm Twana yeah, never even thought of it. Yeah, yeah. Mama Tape. You know, and, then and that's his genius. Of course. The, 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 the branding aspect of like his product, like the, building something around the, around the things that he's advertising. Ah, he's amazing that's what he's at good that. at. That's the genius. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. That's the genius. And you're going to give him props for that. So any day, think about any it. day. Yeah. So later on in the verse, he goes to say that he put hip hop on cardiac arrest. Like that. <laughs> I'm like, he said he put it on life support. He put it on life support. <laughs> okay, that means before he before he decided to leave SA hip hop, quote unquote, putting it on life support. Like the hip, the last hip hop album he dropped wasn't even his best. It wasn't close to his best, right? But it was the biggest essay hip hop of that year. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Nah. Tha- every time he drops, it's the biggest essay hip hop album. Even that's though essay hip hop has been dead for like three years. That's what you think. But every time he drops, he has the biggest. That's the one that makes think. the most noise. No, it's true. Nah. He has, he makes the most noise nah. when he drops. When Casper no, drops. That, yeah, that's, oh, that's arguable. Come you on, see, he's bro. saying most noise. It does make noise, dog. Okay, I Casper's guess album. Whether it's good or bad, it does make noise. People are aware that he dropped the album. Yeah. But the impact. No, people no, are still let's away. talk about the impact, Doc. Who, it's who been years after he dropped Who it. has more impact? Doc, other people. Who? Aries. <laughs> who do you have? Aries has more impact than Casper yes. Nevis. Yeah, no, that's true. Come ah, on. Ah, don't even what, play Doc, games. You fighting, don't play you games. fighting stands every week. When lost did you fight someone who, to, for Casper? I'm a Casper stand. Okay. Ah. Steph's even on his phone now. Nah, Doc, I'm a Casper stand. I'm Doc, saying too. Aries come on, Aries has got more. Doc, come on. Nah, Doc, Aries Doc. has a song called Casper's Picture where he's just praising Casper as his idol. But you don't realize so, the levels. But that doesn't matter. You don't matter. realize the levels. But, <laughs> but who, 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 are, still a 16 year old kid. Who on the, <laughs> Doc, who, as far as just the, the, the chain of like, the, 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 the chain of SA hip hop, Doc. He influenced Aries, Aries, all of them. Aries, Aries, Aries is but it doesn't mean he's so level. hard, Doc. That's, he influ- that's what he influenced we're not the saying biggest which he wasn't right hard now. at a point, Doc. He influenced all of the biggest names right now. But Casper, what he knows, Doc, come on. He's saying he left it in life support. He put it on He wasn't that hard when he left, Doc. Nah, Casper failed to produce. That's why he left SA hip hop. He had the biggest album. Any minute that now. That was the biggest SA hip hop album on, of the time. Bro. Any minute now. Nah. In, ter- in, in terms of those songs. Yeah, in terms of it. You'll you know those songs. Yeah. You'll know those songs. You'll know those songs. Gram, dog. But you know those Awareness. songs, Steph. Awareness. You still know the songs. No, I don't. What? I only know that you was crying about Ricky Rick one song. That's all I know. You listen to that song? Yeah. I listened to the song and I was unimpressed. And you listened to the songs with Zola? The, 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 yeah, that was his biggest song. Day. And you, li- that you was the listen to song the day. songs. Dog. What's Steph doing? You listen to the songs, dog. <laughs> but I listened to it because I needed to know what's going on. Because it's Casper. No. Because it's yes, Casper. Because it's everything is in music. Because it's no. Because ah, it's my job. I said there. Because it's Casper, dog. You have to listen. Because it's Casper, bro. Nah, but I you said awareness. Listen, awareness is different no, from we're impact. Talking, we're talking right. about influence. Mufasa, yeah. influence. No, that's true. Impact. Mufasa. Impact influence, Doc. You're talking about Mufasa. Nah, Doc. Don't be liato. You're confusing awareness from Don't for be impact, liato. Doc. That verse. Don't be liato. And then later on, he says... <laughs> okay, so next year, move on. He says later on that... The time I like a quarter. Quarter's dead. He's <laughs> suddenly <laughs> activated, Doc. He just has to say something, you know? <laughs> we don't show about quarter's dead, Doc. That's it, we're not yeah. sure. Let's leave it that one. Let's talk... Let's not <laughs> talk about it. Somebody else could be, eh? Just say. See now, those are just those rumors that are just like <laughs> so beneath the belt. It's just like, is uh, it even worth it? We talking yeah, about no, music, no lie. That, and you gonna come that talk rumor about is beneath the belt. That one, uh, so whoever tell that belt, one, dog. I, <laughs> but also, who are we to say things are beneath the belt? That's why they got you to say it. You better. <laughs> Out of everyone, you know, who are you to say I that? I guess. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so so so. Later on, he goes to say that you know, influencing everyone. You know, talk. Casper's had had influenced. The the, 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 the the culture in a way. Human in a AKA. major way. Human AKA. You can't you can't you can't AKA nah, for, nah, for, nah, 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 nah. No listen. Equally. No why say hip hop? Equally. Talk no Equally. one was living like them before then. Right. 
no but, one was as impactful. But no one, no has one was the way Casper No lives. one was pop. The, the pop culture, dog. Have you ever seen in South Africa, SA hip hop took first in everything? Like, dog, you're talking about SA hip hop, even if you're a Maskandi artist. You know, AKA, you know Casper. Yeah, but Tola Mayo, yo. You get what I mean? Yeah, but AKA is one died down. That's my problem. Casper kept on going for longer. That's why I can't compare the two of them. Nah, but we're talking about the peak time of SA hip hop. Sure, at the peak, you are. At the peak, you're right. But yeah. then after that, when the peak started to dip, is, other one kept but, it going. But if you want to talk he about, found new shit to do. you want to talk about stuff like He like invented that. shit. Think about it, dog. SA hip hop is not going to be the same because at this point, they're literally, they need to find themselves and how do they relate to a common South African. Casper seems to do it better than AKA, you know? AKA Bro, Shabba China goes level Matosa samples and some verses from old Guaito songs. It's dope, but it's not like we can see that AKA yeah, trying to pull off that, you know, that one colored friend that can speak the neck, you know, that yeah. impresses everyone. That's what he's trying to do. But uh, what I'm saying at this point... That's though, why he couldn't fuck with Casper, dog. At the end of the day, Casper is a gassy black nigga, bro. You know what I mean? Nigga that can them, dance. Both of them are both... Nigga can dance like a motherfucker. He can do both everything. Of, both of them are just... They're no more where they were. And you know what I can say? But Casper and though. AKA did put SA Hip Hop on in a coma. Both of them together. But guess what? Because when they, they lost, they lost the 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 the, the, the spirit or the the, the 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 aggression to produce SA hip hop bangers and like music that is actually worth listening to three years, four years, ten years down the line. When they lost that, they turned AK turned to pop, Kesba turned to Kwaito, shopping, what's this thing, Mutuako, you know, he was always doing it with hip hop, but he turned to that and he turned to piano. And then guess what? Everyone is there. No one knows who's... They don't know it, yeah. Yeah, no one knows who's leading it anymore. Mainstream media doesn't want to cover a, a genre which has... It's confused. South Africans don't relate to it at all. No one has they, stepped up. You get what I mean? No one has stepped up and actually raised his hand and said, okay, guys, after these two guys and after that whole generation of Abu Riki and the, like all you don't of think them, Reece, I'm here. Reece, Reece, no, talk. You know what's the problem Reece, with Reece? Reece, Reece guys, flop. literally, no. Reese is the only, like, no. topic... No, oh, nasty no, 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 no. niggas. Come dog, on. Reese, Reese, dog, you know why Reese and all those other gents which make that kind of sound? It's like Abo Nasty C. Abo. Yeah, sure. You know why it's a problem for them? Because, dog, to the common South Africa, they do not relate. They're trying to make it outside, dog, while inside your own home ground. You're, be you're being beaten 3 0. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I mean? So them relating to the common South African, it's gone, dog. That's why I'm a piano, dog. That's why they'll never be able to beat I'm a piano. Dog, I'm a piano from frequency. It's been shown, it's, the study's been shown that those rhythms. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, those, those rhythms. This one sounds studies. like it's made it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those studies show. been shown that those rhythms are addictive, dog. What yeah. the I'm a piano rhythms? Yeah, dog. But I mean, it's damn. Hip hop, hip -hop, hip -hop it comes from an aggressive point. Uh, Perspective. Mm. Oh, you coming with that Kanye weight, Kanye West 808s. Nah, but uh, let's, let's be honest. When you listen you to You know piano, how he says the 808s play, uh, plays in the lower chakra yeah. of your thing and it releases sure. what part? Yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. But yeah, I hear obviously it's going to be better than hip hop, right? It's more rhythm, rhythmic, you know, drums, you know, it's got but, that. But let me go in first. Casper yeah. was the only one who was oh, yeah. able to get into that. So I was saying, uh, with. With Casper's verse, I feel like his verse was the latest to be added because they knew that if they have Casper and Ricky on a song, it's going to cause commotion. You get what I mean? It's but the like song the was real, work, ne? Real, I think it was it was okay. Yeah, I, I don't like it. it. Yeah, but it is me though. It's like it's a bunch of verses put together. You get what I mean? For me, you know what I don't like about it? It's not a slapper. It's not a song. It's not a slapper that I can put on repeat. Exactly what you're saying. It's not a song. It's just verses there. Yeah. People showing off that they can rap. Even the chorus is just like, ooh, ah, like what? Ah. That's the chorus. Because I, I felt like Twitter went crazy over it because you know the relationship between Ricky and Casper. But at the same time... I didn't time, even see what Twitter said about it. It was going crazy. Ah, oh, Ricky, ah, oh, Casper. And the other thing is, South Africa misses Ricky's voice. And they can't, they haven't accepted that he's gone yet. You know I mean? Yeah. So when they saw that, they were like, oh, this is amazing. Doc, Ricky's delivered better verses. Yeah. Honestly. For me, Ricky, I don't want to hate on Ricky, but. You always want to say. Dog, his feel verses like Ricky, have just never no, stuck like, on me. Dog, I feel like Ricky and Casper, as far as rapping is concerned, they're on the same level. Because Casper is not the best rapper, but he's the 
one of the coolest to do it. In that in that song though. Nah, it just felt like it just felt like he was talking boss in a boss. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's what I like about like, that verse the most is that he was flexing on niggas. Boss. Yeah? They're not boss verses. Like they're not like top tier boss. Though. Yeah, you know what I think? I think he's the only one that can talk like that on the song. The only rapper that can talk like that. Because in your head, he deserves to because he's he's done the work. No, the other rappers we would know that you are capping. So Ricky can't talk like that. I Ricky can talk like that. Talk like that. Yeah. I yeah, feel but, like yeah, Ricky but Ricky's dog. dead though. What do you mean? <laughs> Ricky could talk like that, dog. What the hell? Ricky dog? could talk like that. He could talk like that, dog. Because he's like, dog, he has also a, a, a lot to flex about, dog. But was it like on a business level, the way Casper is talking about it? Because I'm listening to the, the content in that verse, dog. It's like, damn, this guy's rapping like he's Jay-Z, dog. Who, Ricky? Casper. Casper. I mean, like, dog, you know Casper, dog. He always sees himself there. He visualizes himself as... The Biliato, the billionaire of South Africa. Yeah, the billionaire. He said that's his next goal. Yeah, the the the, the yay of South Africa. But it, like I feel like we we lost the real yay, dog, which is Ricky. Yeah. Most deaf dog. You see, our Casper, dog, Casper, Most dog, dog, Casper, as far as business moves, um, marketing, strategies, uh, just like being that guy that everyone talks about 24-7, 365 days of the year. He can do that, but like to just have that everlasting social impact in the youth, that was Ricky's job. <laughs> what? Just because he's dead? <laughs> no, he's been like that, dog. You know that. Even when he was alive. And the, the other thing is, they make it. It's <laughs> like I'm wondering, <laughs> really, like, what's happening? He just threw that and laughed, dog. Dog, I'm just. No, nah, it's just like, like, what is to say, dog? Uh uh. Dog, you. Am dog, I lying? We've had about, conversations like this many a am time. Am I lying, though? Am I lying, though? Am I lying, though? On the youth show, that's it. Though. Yeah, then Casper on what? The general public. <sighs> Man, let's be <laughs> no one listens to hip hop like that. <laughs> the general public. Is at a, it's at a point where they, they still need to figure out what, who they are. They they are in SA hip hop. Dog, what it, what does make what does SA hip hop? How does SA hip hop stand out in the world? Yeah, SA hip hop is dead. Casper didn't revive it. It was just a hyperbole, but. Nah, he's dog. still the brightest. He's, he's still the brightest out of the whole bunch. Nah, we don't even count him, dog. Yeah. Who do you count? Lucas Reps. Uh, yeah, yeah it's countable the, Lucas Reps. About uh, Lecky. 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 You know, Lecky people the, about Aries. You know, these are, yeah. rapper. And Steph, you're right. These are people who actually live the shit. No, you're not talking about Blakey, about Lucas, about Aries. Aries. No, 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 no. Lucas. Kaba, Lucas. You don't Reps, think dog. you don't think, think that nigga loves hip hop? I'm saying hip hop. Like he's very hip hop. Dog, like, you see what you were saying about A. Reese saying he's that literally what will Casper do hip hop you know just for rapper, numbers and shit? And yeah. then they actually live the shit. Come on, you can't tell me Lucas doesn't live hip hop. Do you know who How lives the, the, what's he lives hip hop? Dog. Dog. What's living hip hop? Dog, look, just every rapping day, every day. Dog. No, not necessarily just no, that. Hip-hop is a lifestyle, Everything. Dog. It's a lifestyle. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you about hip hop. And dog. he doesn't fit no, that no, category. No, no. You know why what's going wrong with hip hop? Even American hip hop. Hip hop is literally a movement that what you call was supposed to awaken the black child, you know, subconsciously. It was a medium yeah. given to people to speak their mind, basically. Yes. Just like poetry, just like any other thing. You get what I mean? Mara. It lost its plot because they don't have one common goal. They had a common goal, but what is that common goal? Because you must remember, Doc, if back then, why hip-hop was so popular, it was because it, it's, it spoke when you... It when could you relate did, to the people. Besides that, what it made everyone want to be a hip-hop artist or a rapper was you can become rich off it. Right now, we know, dog, we know as clear as daylight, dog, that our rappers, the biggest rappers are broke. Right. So, what makes you want to become a rapper in South Africa? If everyone's broke, which is rapping, the biggest artists are broke. No, they're not. Yeah, but... I don't think are. The biggest rappers. Ain't dead. Do you think... Do the you biggest think, rappers. Whoa, do you in think, South whoa? Africa. Okay, so maybe like Lucas, the, can you can say that maybe he wanted to start rapping because he wanted to become rich. But I don't even think that. that. I don't even remember, think that. You must remember that, dog. The problem is with, with hip-hop. Dog, there's no singular, united, what you call, movement that says we're all fighting for one thing. Back then, it was for, what you call, education Now there people. is. What is it? Fighting against piano. Try to make it. Try no, to make you're it not meant to fight against piano, dog. Why is piano your it. enemy? Dog, why is SA, dog, why is piano your enemy? For me, the best rappers are in piano. 
What? No, talk. I'm saying wise piano people's enemy, talk. The best rappers are in piano. Wise piano. Dog, that's that's, a, that's a competitor right now. Nah, it's not. You're not meant to compete with it. You're meant to learn from it, dog. Right. That's true. Because you, at the same time, with with SA hip hop, when I say there's no compete form with of, it. Yo, I, this girl of yours, dog, is she gonna no come or not? Literally, there's no form of. Uh, there's but no are you just saying there's a common cause? There's I mean, no there's common no common cause. cause. That is the common cause, dog. What? That piano's chowing our ass. Nah, dog. No one must come there and you must start working because people are making more money. This is why this is why hip hop will never go anywhere. Yeah, dog. That mindset doesn't that make sense. That mentality of piano, because pianos, dog. The best rappers are in piano. <laughs> Ray, leave it, dog. Just, what I'm saying is, it doesn't make piano. sense because think about it, dog. Dog, Youngster is a rapper. No, here's my thing, dog. <laughs> dog you see when you said Witty is. niggas is doing a uh, 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 hip hop because of dog people are doing piano now because it makes why money. Was They're not even passionate then. like why that, was, dog. Why was hip hop successful back then? Why was it successful? It was the because, message. Yes, and it was the lifestyle that comes with it. You right. need to be rich. You gotta right. be known. You gotta right. be a voice. Right. Status. Weighs it right now. You don't have none of that. You're not going to be rich. You're not going to be known because no one listens to SA Hip Hop. And what's the message? Fucking but bitches. Honestly, honestly, those are what? all the wrong reasons for you to do hip hop. No, but that's what, that's, think about it. That's literally what the message is right now. That's why it doesn't relate to no one, dog. Dog, who, what are you, what are you doing? So wearing, you're saying they're why, selling a dream wearing that's a not even, chain in South Africa, that's not dog? even there. Dog, what are you doing wearing a diamond chain? That time you don't even have a, a, a piece of land. Think about it. Okay, what? I no, I hear that. I hear but that. If SA Hip Hop was talking, preaching to the people to learn, Do you know how much to learn? improve themselves, educate them. Do you know how much learn? Maybe talk? you could have you could have had people listening to you. But if you're talking about a lifestyle that doesn't make sense, talk. Nah, bro. Me, I don't even think it's because they want to be rich and all. Because dude, piano's the exact same thing, bro. It's the exact same you know thing. Why? It's just like it's a, a glorified, it's a different, it's a hip hop that we can relate but to. But which, which lifestyle is it? You understand? So that's why Bokaspa can the switch. They can even, Bokaspa can leave hip hop and go to piano. It's you in the hood. Dog. That's my thing. That's my, that's it's my, it's the exact South same thing as hip hop. It's, no, it's just about, localized, dog. No, dog. It's literally, it's, literally it's status, it's saying. lifestyle, it's piano. money. I'm a piano. It's bitches. I'm a piano. It's vianos. I'm one about I'm a piano. When you do it, there's a possibility you get no. Ne? That does high SA chance. Hip-hop. Right yeah. now, high chance. SA hip hop doesn't have that. Yes. There's two, you can be rich of it. SA hip hop, it's immediately. No, you can, but like with piano, it can be like a six month thing. You get what I mean? Mm. Three, it's relativity to the people. It's talking about South African traumas, dog. So, I'm a piano is, hip- is SA hip hop. But better. Yeah. That's why I say hip hop is so what you're hip-hop. saying is that hip hop must just forget Yongi and Donjay. They need to undefi- they need to find themselves out, dog. And it's that's like what that I'm saying right now. Know. That's what the, like that's what's happening old, with this. Like twenty year olds, they don't know who they are yet. You don't think it's happening, dog? That can take twenty years. Yeah, that took a while before it's they def. actually b- became big, dog. It's def, you don't think so? You don't think that's actually like, like happening now? Like they coming together if and trying to find a movement going going forward. If you're a hip hop head, right, saying this to me that. Your common goal is to take down I'm a piano. No, then you not. That's what I'm not seeing. In the right state of that's mind. what I'm seeing. You get Literally, there. that's the conversation. No, I shall not wait. Wait, let me tell you. I shall not do this chase after I'm a piano. Listen, Jai let me man. tell you. Let Jai me tell you. Jai Yesterday, Jai I, shall not with, piano, I was in the boy, east never. with uh, a vibe. I was just went to go see my homie. And then on my way back, I shall not with some pro. The one pro asked me, he's like, yo, like, so you since you're sharing this podcast thing, when, when is piano going to die? Never. And I'm like, Dog, don't be waiting for it to die. Dog. Never, dog. dog. You can't be waiting because that's 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 what I'm trying to say. Good, that's the word on the street, dog. When you speak to hip hop niggas, okay, they, I hear they, you, you, you. You know uh, what I'm saying? Speaking from a perspective right. of what people are saying, I'm right? Not, you're not they 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 they're waiting for it to, but to, you can't replace your dog. You can't replace one and put yourself in. It doesn't mean if this person goes, you're going to be on the top, right? You're only gonna be on the top if you're on the top. Right. So but here's my thing is, what I'm saying is that even so though it's not a good in, cause, right? yeah. it's not, even though it's not a good cause, yeah. it is a cause. Yeah, it's one, one mind, you know, it's, it's, it's a common cause, it's a common goal. Don't you think that's good enough for niggas to actually like get their weight up? Nah, if your common goals are built on a foundation of negativity and not growth. Hey! Chakra ah. Steph. Chakra Steph. Chakra Steph. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. <laughs> I Dog, I say, but the feeling is never coming back. Ah. I'm not it's gonna rain till kingdom comes. 
Nah, I don't think I, I really think dog things the things I've been hearing, niggas are working, but it's just people don't want to listen. We can't yeah, listen to two working. things at a time. We want dimensional dog. Yeah. That's why we even Drake's album. We hate it. I dog, I don't like you. Sticky is growing on I me. I told you. You see? Sticky. Only. You see? Sticky. Ah, talk. But you see, but step, no, here's the thing. No, you know but here's the thing is, you know a lot sticky? of people can't even admit that. I, no, no, no. They're going to just want to leave, you know, just say, hey, nah, me. it's not talk. slapping. You know why Sticky's growing on me? I want to hear Think about it. No, 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 Rhea. You know what I said? Everything I said about Rhea, that's not house music. Sticky's not house. What is it? That's not house. What is it? That's, talk. that's something else. That's house music, talk. you tell me Sticky's house. sounds like an excuse, talk. Talk, but that's not house. It's dams. I was complaining about the house music on it, talk. Steph, it sounds like an excuse, Are you even listening to yourself, talk? I am, Sticky. Talk, ask No, Mara, thanks. At least, at least you can say, talk. At least you can say, shout out. Sticky is the only song which is on there that he's not singing and it's not house. You hated Sticky, Steph. No, I didn't. I had I had a problem with the subject matter. I played Sticky for this talk, guy in the car What did I say about it? Did times? I say the beat is dope? But the, the subject matter. Did I not say that? Yeah, you are calling about subject matter. This guy still hated me. But, but, but still also, to hate if, if it's nah, subject matter, maybe you didn't hear it crying. Nah, right? talk, talking about making a pussy go wet. Yeah, I like the beat. Talk, I used to know what I hate on the slab, No, I only like the beat. I don't like to. I I even downloaded the instrumental. You just said it's growing on you. Yeah, the instrumental. I can appreciate the beat. You only listen to the instrumental. Yeah. <laughs> so you only listen to the instrumental. Laptop. When I check the laptop, imagine. I literally, yeah. I literally downloaded. It. Like imagine listening to that song and you can hear. You know how sticky it gets. Hey, you know how sticky it gets. Hey, she won't really play with You know, you know why, dog? Because I feel like dog. Drake but I think better. also, dog. Another thing is we should consume music the Drake. way we want. Oh, we can find a drink. You know what I, I'm saying? Uh, you can also, fuck that with Drake, boy. Dog, it's a bit weird, weird, but we must consume it anyway. Around around two weeks. I think still mid. A nigga will turn you around in two weeks. Am I lying? Is it not two weeks? Ah, you one me song. I'm here on a move song, from this because we're gonna one stay song. another thirty minutes on one, one song. For one song. One song. Let's let's bring on in the, the whole guest. album. Let's, let's bring on the guest. We wanna go to the, straight to the guest. Yeah. How long have we been going for? About forty minutes, right? Uh, did we wrap up everything that's happened? Yeah, I think we did. We only talked about Ricky. No, we just talk about the song, dog. I mean, what else happened? What else happened, dog? On your end. Ah, uh, on my end, uh, just a whole lot of bullshit, bro. On your end? Ah, uh, nothing much. Well, just uh, people hating get... what I said about something, so wait. I thought they'll be, they'll be fine, dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why would you they'll be fine? <laughs> nah, it's, dog, it's, yeah, dog. You see, the, with that, I did that in Kuleko thingy. Yeah, like, people yeah. People are angry at me because Why? I was saying, literally, that we, we, our platform is literally based off freedom of speech. At the same time, it's like opening your mind to see if, you actually love the thing. Because if you can yeah, explain right. why you love it, that means you know why you love it. Yeah. It's not a sheep, it's not sheep, sure. mentality, it's sheep behavior. You get what I mean? Um, so why so were they... People, why, didn't, what? people didn't like that. Why? And people didn't like the fact that I was saying that whole explanation of why I think so Penduka didn't like... Doug, you know what? I don't have noticed, ne? Yeah. I think we'll always find people like that everywhere we go because exactly for what we stand for. Yeah. I want to get under you know? all of their skin because there's nothing that they can do. I want to skin them my life. And I get under their skin, we we'll piss them off. Yeah. Uh, let's get that's to the, the goal. That's the mission. Yeah. Okay, I'm rolling. But yeah, um, 2017 it was yeah. like a very dark year for me. Six months, no work. You know, you're a filmmaker, mm -hmm. freelancer. And now at the time, um, I was a cinematographer full time. So camera operator, cinematographer. For, you know? for what type of stuff? So from I've worked with SABC, MTV. I've worked with Netflix. I've mm -hmm. worked with yeah. As long as you, as long as you're shooting, I'm there. Behind the scenes, commercials, all of it. Yeah. Series, movie, all of it. So what what can you do behind the scenes? Like so behind the scenes, um, I I'm an honorary graduate, a cinematography graduate, mm -hmm. um, which is basically the director of photography. Yeah. So I would camera operate, I'd design the look and feel of the story, and mm. yeah, execute it, lighting and camera. So that's what I studied, that's what I did for a couple of years and I've always had a plan to transition eventually mm. because I also have dreams of being a mom, you know. So I did figure, yeah. So I did figure, you know, that within the cinematography industry, it was already like a heavy misogyny. It's a wild, white male dominated industry. You can yeah. see the. So name. I, I, I came through from Maritzburg. Like I grew up in PMB, you mm. know, small capital city of Maritz of Gazulu and Natal. But I already knew what I wanted to do. Grade eight already, I wanted to come to NSA, but I couldn't. 
you know. Mm. Um, but I was like, okay, cool. Well, people don't know what's NSA. National School of the Arts. Mm. Yeah, so that's where most of our people came. About Uncle V, about Yams. Yeah, yeah. So you've always found yourself to be a creative from an early age. It's weird, yeah. From like preschool. I was what? always like pushed into it. But I guess it was by for this moment. By family members. And like the structures, yeah. So I, my first memory of me ever interacting as an artist, which I have vividly, um, I was wearing a white dress. It was end of the year. I was probably four years old. Jesus Christ, Christmas oh. story. And I did the opening Mary. song. Yeah. Oh. See, I go do me. So I remember, see, I go do me. So Dude, I've never watched a play. Yeah. And then, <laughs> a Zulu play of Jesus Christ. What's your name? Like, yeah. Well, I don't know. I was a colored preschool, but I had to do the opening of that. So that was my first time ever. That's your first memory. Memory I have. And I know at home, I was always the party chick. Mm. So I was oh, born in the 90s. Kids, yeah. So come yeah. and die. Yeah. yeah, please come was and die. Come and die. <laughs> no, I was the body chick. There's a picture of mine, actually. I think I was in grade one. 97. Uh, oh. It's about time. Boom 97, chaka. you're in grade one. Yeah, grade one. Whoa. I was born in 1990. When Mandela busted out, I busted out too. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, 97, uh, Boom Shaka, it's about time. My favorite. At the time, I was obsessed. Yeah. So there's a picture of me with holding my grandmother's walking stick. Because in the video, they had the sticks. You know, so it was like the dance. There's a picture of man in uniform in the morning. So I was always that kid at home. And I don't know why, but mm -hmm. it happened to be. But obviously my family as well. My great-grandfather was one of the first preachers to preach on Ukozi FM in the, during a party. By day. preachers, you mean? Like Kumfundis. He was a Lutheran priest. P-H. P-F and kids. So my grand came from a very musical background, but on a Christian tone. Mm. So it was always like music was a daily thing. At home, we pray every single day, half past six. Like that's my grand, like... It's the system. Like so every I grew, day? Every single, like I go there now. So you grew up with your grandparents? Yeah, I was raised by my grandmom, yeah. So and my mom, but my grandmom mainly. What, what do you mean, like, when you pray, you stop everything you're doing? So half past six. So it used to be six, and then it became 6.30. But now it's kind of back to six now. Like black the hour. Black like, <laughs> <Like> timing. <laughs> the times always change. But literally half past six is a procession. So which is a hymn book of mm. Lutherans. Yeah. And they're all in Zulu. So, and my grand was very, like, chorally, classically trained. Mm. So even if we call him you can't start it. Because she's like, mm -mm. When I call and get so plan your color and do it again, that will stop the procession. This, she is wants to, this is This wild. is in PMB in my home. Where I was so raised. you guys take hours. You might take hours doing it. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, you, especially you, if somebody <laughs> bimbas. <laughs> it's true. My grandmother would not. If you're starting the song, mm. she'll get nominated because I have a voice. Mm. I'm one of those who have a voice at home, but she'll nominate. Two seven five, two seven five for my Lucy Numbusa. So you gotta, you know the the key. The I never literally read music, but I always heard it. And I knew how to interpret it. Mm, right. So as I moved on in high school, I went to a colored high school as well, you know, mm. slightly PFC disadvantaged. But because I was an artist, I was like, I feel weird. And that was like the era of hip hop, mm. session, like ciphers, MCs, mm. like not the same world of hip hop, but like <laughs> when the content was necessary. So I started um, a hip hop club okay. in my high school. Yeah. No, you, you know why I'm looking at them? Because <laughs> yeah. before you came, I was like, yo, back then, as far as just. Hip hop's concerned, there was a message, and I think we lost it. It's true. And because, even in particular in South Africa as well, if you think about the expression of music, that's why I want to go back to Opum Shaka. Mm. We were in a particular turmoil, mm. you know? So there was a lot of anger mm. and explosions. Mm. That's why we had all these different genres coming about, even dress wise as well. Mm. The style we changed, the city, was we evolved. The, was I it think that act was. Act of activism, like with your hair and out. And rebellion, and, and, and consciously. Mm. And, it, and I think even because America was also so, the whole thing about black diaspora, mm. what happens in one black era, it, it right, attracts right, it another. Because we're all one energy. So, mm. so, so, it was connected. So, mm. you know, so I think. Because you look at Pumshaka then, they were dressed like a Leah name. It was like 90s right, swag. Right. Mm. But it was like, we were doing hip hop. So there was POC, you had your Ishmaeli and mm. you know, you had your hip hop heads. Mm. But then in, a, uh, in an African ghetto interpretation, stylistically, culturally, we mm. dressed like Will Smith and everybody and Martin mm. Lawrence. Mm. But the interpretation of freedom was different. Do you think, right. do you think that the anger brings out the best out of us? Though? Because I feel like <laughs> when we are passionately angry, mm. yeah. we can force change to take place. True. And that's when like the, the best scenarios happen, you happen, know, in yeah. terms of like the creativity sparked out of you. Mm. True. You know, you are, you are more eager to learn stuff. 
it's just like this is what I like about like past being angry, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll I'll tell you something, I agree with you because when I I went like we'll get to the music journey, but my first song that I wrote, which is like me, this mm. is me like deciding that I'm doing this music thing by myself. I had gone to Atlas Studios. I was at after, Atlas Studios right here behind us. Mm-hmm. And they used to have a first uh, Wednesday club. Every month of Wednesday, there's a film, free liquor, free food. It was just mm. like a vibe. So you come through, you watch a movie, Q&As. And we mm-hmm. watched a documentary. can't remember the title of it, but it was about the Black Panthers in America. Mm. The Black Conscious Movement Group. So for me, obviously, you know, yeah. as a big old Franz Fanon, Malcolm X kid, mm. It was beautiful for me to watch that dog. And I got home, it was like this energy inside of me. I was like, what the fuck? Mm. Like, this shit is like inciting Huey mm. Newton. Mm. Um, and I was washing my clothes at the time I was staying at Rosebank. I'm on the dryer. And this, this, this thing came to me. It was like, Black Panther coming back from the future. So those were the first words that caught to me. So as the dryer is spinning, I took a pen and paper and I started writing my first single, Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made that single. And the documentary had riled up something inside of me. Mm-hmm. It made me angry. It made me inspired. Sense of purpose. Yeah. And it made me like, you know, want to just do some more. Mm. And know that you in the lane lane. Like, there wouldn't, be, like there wouldn't have way. been no great revolutionary in the world without anger. Mm. True. Like there wouldn't have been people building all these buildings. Mm. <laughs> if they weren't angry that there was no like no shelter. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's all about the need for change. It is. It's all about the need for change, bro. Yeah. I think we yet to get there. South Africa is yet to see it again. But I can tell you are sort of like more on the black consciousness spectrum. And then like you sort of remember when it th- when it started. Do you think that um, most black people today aren't aware of like the type of um, struggles that black people went through in the past? Um, uh, dope question as well. Um, I think... I feel like we all have an amnesia and we've had an amnesia as a black nation everywhere. Diaspora mm. here, in Papua Guinea, in mm. America, everywhere there's a black human being. We've had a, 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 a amnesia for 500 years, I would mm. assume. Because it's like everything keeps pointing here, but mm. then we don't see it. And for me, it's the same experience that I'm dealing with as a person, as a human being. Like... It's like, I, I understand and I know that I'm fortunate enough to be given, my path has always aligned me to to seek and find a bit of the truth and to maybe it's even a better advantage mm. than Klambe mm. Umfez who, who could just, because it's, it's all about understanding, not really understanding, but it's all, it's once you get to a position of knowing, okay, listen, once upon a time, there was Africa and Africa was a beautiful a pure, innocent woman mm. who had all of this uh, glory and greatness and then gave birth to all of these glorious, great, amazing human beings. Mm. And then things fall apart. It's like in every structure in life, there's a balance. It's good, as bad, there's day, there's night. Mm. You know, but it, it's, it's, it's to manage the energies because mm. you can't have good without bad. That's just the consistency of life. But so, what, how can you know good without bad? That's the thing. Mm. You can't know bad without good as well mm. and vice versa. So it both, so we've gotten to a space where we forgot the greatness of who we are. Everything is showing us every single day. There's pyramids in Africa, man. Come on. Like, and Egypt is in Africa. People don't get confused. Like, you know, <laughs> including Israel. I know like, Beth- it is I hear Africa. Bethlehem is in No, can Victoria I tell you guys something? Here. I want to teach you guys and something. Jesus was Hold on. Can I eat? Can I eat? Oh, oh, so what they did is that they, 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 oh, they made a canal. So if you look at the map, right? Mm. You're looking at the north. So Egypt is still uh, structured here. The only difference is that you have um, the Arabs who have taken over the territory. But entirely, that whole section in the north belongs to Africa. So what happened in a certain time, they, they, they built a canal. So on the edge of between Africa and Asia, right? They, they made an explosion, mm. which made the ocean seep through mm. to separate. It doesn't even separate. It's like a pathway of water, mm. but I can still walk to Jerusalem from Africa. Genyao. Like, we can walk. So even like the whole concept in the Bible that Moses traveled 40 years and 40 people from Jerusalem to Israel. We we can walk. It's on the map. I'll show you guys. It's that's a canal. They made an explosion to make the water go through there. And then, but you can still go. It's still, you can walk. Is it one of those So you you understand as well, the best way to conquer nations by killing them from within and after they fall themselves. So if you're changing the visual structures, the language, the culture. 
you need to you need to break everything apart. Even for me, I was traumatized when I found that piece of information. And I looked at the map, like, well, I'll show you guys when we're done. You look at the map and you see the canal. And then you see the entrance from above Egypt. There's a right path where you walk into Jerusalem. Wait, wait, do you, do you, think, that, do you think that black consciousness and feminism are connected? Mm-mm. They can't be. Because feminism is derived from an issue and the struggle of white women. Mm. Is it not, not anger? Is it, is it not, no, no, no. Anger. That's so true. We got one That's here, not buddy. The same. Do, you like, think that, do you think that like black women <laughs> have adopted feminism when it wasn't even meant for them? And right. they've taken it to a whole another league and level that doesn't even like <laughs> no, affect you know, them. No, but white women can switch off feminism at what? 9 p.m. <laughs> they, and black women have to take it with them. They take it with them. They, they but, lie to you. <laughs> they need to take it beyond that. But though. I think it goes back to what she was saying. Which it's not, it wasn't for them. It wasn't made for them. It so. wasn't. So mm. even the title. Because we've got to go back to things we have. I always say to people, like I look at my language. Mm. And there's certain words that it I've got Zulu. to learn. is Zulu. Mm. And there's certain language I've got to learn. And I always wonder if, if it's not, if I can't find it in my tongue in presence, it's not in my realm. Mm. So feminism was a movement and it, 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 there's different elements that added to feminism, including cigarette brand companies. I was, la- mm. I was laughing recently. Um, I was telling my friends about um, uh, one of Carl Jung's nephews in the late 80s was hired by Stavisons, I can't remember which cigarette brand in particular, to try and open up the market of cigarettes to females. Mm. And that was like the uprising of the feminist era for mm. white American mm. women because the men were working, they were staying at home. Mm. They're like, no, we want to be strong and mm. we want to work and mm. we want to be seen. Or is the lady with the bandana with the Yeah, um, you've seen mm. the image, right? So then this uh, psychologist was who was hired by a marketing agency to right. help them get into the minds mm. of the people so they can sell look white. Mm. So they're like, no, give these women, tell them the cigarette is their weapon. And it was a time of war. Mm. And women had to stay at home and not fight a few, but we're staying at home. Vietnam is happening. It was a time of war. So the symbol of the cigarette, which you can light, it's fire. Mm. It's your gun. Mm. So that was the, the trademark. Fuck. Mm. And which also embedded and pushed this whole brand of feminism. So feminism, I think to a certain light, is, um, it's, it's, it makes sense. Mm. You know, I think uh, as humans, I don't think we're the same, mm. but I do believe we're equal. I don't mm. think we're the same. So I think that's where feminism breaks. I don't think we're the same, but I think we're equal. That's just how I am. And well, I hope have, people... We all have our own rules. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And when I grew up as a kid, my grand always used to say, and it was just on the basis of it being a sibling. Mm. So if I would start some shit with my sister, who's mm. older than me, obviously... You know, she's going to handle me. So in she's a, like, do what you do, but remember, I'm a mm. In a relationship, though, do you think that I know there's the equality is going to in a relationship woman. between a man and a woman there in is. terms of the relationship as a whole? There is. That's what I'm saying. We're so not the same, you, but we're equal. But, like, isn't it like for, for something to work, right? Like, let's think about a country. Don't you think there needs to be one leader, like maybe a president, for the whole thing to work? Because, like, that's the final decision maker, the someone who. Alone, they just make decisions by themselves. No or president if, does it alone. They have a because council. you can't. You can have. I think it's important. But to there has have, to be a final decision has, maker. I think. I think there has to be. And this is a very interesting question. You know, especially with the structures of Africa, we've been in. I, I mean, I don't know. I can't date how the first African country to gain independence. I can't really be specific. Mm. And South Africa is the last country in the entire world to mm. receive any form of form of freedom in this mm. era. You know, but. I do, as a South African, I'll be straight up. I did not vote the last time. Right? And Why I'll say this openly. I didn't vote because I did not feel like any of the political structures that were available to me would honor my vote. Mm. So I, I chose to sit it out. Mm. So because I, I thought I was honoring my people. For me, because I can't... It, 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 the, the, the structures that are available did not seem like they would be moving in a position where I'd see there's hope. But so I don't want to waste my voice. It's not protest, you know that. I, it, for me, it's not even about that. I'm not protesting. If you want to change things, you could at least vote in a position whereby it's the least uh, popular candidate. You get what I mean? You see, so that's that will, the thing. But that, that's the problem with me. I want my vote to go to use. I don't want just to waste it and spoil it. But sometimes but you've, got to, you've got to waste it for some years. To, you see, so I voted before. Come. I voted twice before that. I voted twice before that. And even when I voted, the first time I voted, I, um, I thought about spoiling my vote. But I realized that my intention of, of doing this is for me to be heard. Yeah. And I felt like everybody who was on the platform is not going to represent yeah, you, me. Yeah. And, ha- and they've struggled to present most black people right now. 
Because the reality of things is that Africa is fucked. Like, Why? I don't care. No, because the world has changed so much, mm. right? And But the bigger masses. So I've been fortunate, like I'm a hustler, you know. I've been fortunate. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I think when I graduated from university, I got to work for um, Ezemvelo, which is wildlife and nature, KwaZulu Natal. Oh. And I, I so you were capturing content of the. So I wasn't even capturing. It was interesting actually. Were you the, I was so doing you a see survey. The stalk. <laughs> Stalking the prey. No, not even that. Interesting enough, I was doing a survey on people and neighborhoods that live around game reserves and nature conservation spaces. So obviously, because we know South Africa, as much as apartheid was a separation, it is still a separation. And I proved that when I was walking those separate grounds. Mm. So if I'm, I was at Ongoya, Ongoya is like next to um, uh, Zululand University mm. in KZN, and there's a, a village next to the conservation there. Mm. I met a woman who had never left that place since 19, she was like 80 something old. She never left since she was 21. And this is the problems they have today. They mm. have issues with pigs coming out of the reserve, like wild pigs and monkeys eating their plants. So when I, I travel to most of the black neighborhoods, welcoming, very poor, mm. no water, mm. no kesa mm. like ridiculous. Like mm. I'm walking through In the forest, I'm scared about the snakes. So yeah. I'm just like, shit. But like, they always offered me something. Mm. So then flip the other side of the coin mm. now. Uh, you know, because you're going to ask about people. If you can ask about people in Gazun Natal, there's two sides. Mm. I'll tell about that side that traumatized me when I heard of, this woman's 80 something years old. Mm. In a 21. She went to say, she went to go to a wedding when she was 20 years old in another village when she was 21 years old. So she, she's never seen the world. The rest, the last I time. lost my mind. And it took me like, for me, Ongoya is literally. Once you're on go, you take like 30 minutes drive, you get into a city. Do you understand? Like you see city, you see ocean, So it's still people. far from the city. It's not. Oh. It's 30, not. 30, 30 minutes away. She's it's never not. made that trip. Oh, this she's see. right here. Damn, this is, it's right here. It's not. Yeah. This is all she's seen. And she's sitting like, and she's satisfied. Her eyes is fucked. Like, huh? And she's satisfied. Is that what you see? No. I was like, they sent me. <laughs> send me like but don't you think sometimes like what you don't know like won't really no, no, you're more happier place. when you don't know that there's a whole I don't think that because I, 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 because I know I, I think everyone else about, think about when you were as a kid right you, that, that was your happiest phase like you didn't know much old, nine, no nine years, like, I wasn't that kid to the world. I wasn't I was yeah. never that kid I was never born that way I was always you're curious. curious I had I was I was the type of kid when I was four years old mm. I couldn't watch Star Trek because I had phobia of aliens I used to have weird nightmares about those things so I grew up in Brazil in that weird little small town I'm mm. here and all of this existed so that's why I don't believe I don't think it's enough but does, doesn't it come doesn't stem from the falseness of the false uh, lies or just lies in general of inclusion. You get what I mean? Yeah. Because 94, 1994 yes. was a big marketing scheme. To yes. To say that we're included. To cross over. Yeah, we're included and there's going to be a transition and the reconciliation is going to come through financial gains, through land, through... And which is the brainwash. This is the problem. That is the biggest brainwash they've given to our people. And I can experience it because I'm fortunate enough to see it. My, my uncle, I have two uncles or twins who are part of the MK, mm. right? The one passed mm. away in 2001. Everyone in her family is being something. Yeah, the one <laughs> passed away in 2001, the one is still alive. And because I was there, I, I grew up in KZN in 93 when there was UDF, IFP, UDM, ANC war, when mm. literally black on black violence, just on the runway to 94. Mm. Because at that point now, you must understand, the system is like, listen, okay, the world is not allowing us. They've sanctioned us. Mm. It's awkward. Mm. We're the only ones standing. And I'm mm. talking about the white men, the system. Mm. They're like, mm, okay, it's got a shine. Mm. Let's, let's, let's transition the movement because that's all it was. There was no freedom. Mm. And that's why I still won't vote today because the ex does not, I, I'm Mark not. The and I've seen, like those women I'm speaking about there. Because you know what happens. Come election time. They're wearing the they they come in with the cars to fetch your go to they go register. Up. And they give you a They come in with the cars for that day. And then four years later, they come back again. So for me, because I've seen, I've heard the people, I've witnessed it. I know the realities. It's bullshit. It's but then bullshit. how are we going to change this as the youth of... The, the youth that doesn't vote because technically this is the youth do you know what the problem vote. is for me that's what I think I think the system itself has to transition it has to change it's cut a shine right 
because we we need to realize that we're also we're, we're still existing under a system even the concept of voting they're like okay cool you guys been kind of vote okay we're done it uh, your people are also in it mm. right even that's why i was at 93 before that they fought oh our king umtwana uptelez was like oh i want to Oh, I want to also be part of the election, but it's going to be obvious they're giving it to Mandela, so why must I? Mm. Why must I? And then there's a war. For a whole year, niggas were killing each other in KZN. Mm. I was a kid. In 1997, I remember in grade one, I walked out of the bus stop, niggas were shooting each other. <laughs> I froze. Oh, my, my sisters were vouch. I froze, they ran. I was like, no ways. And these niggas were shooting each other. From two, they lived, they grew up together in the same hood. Supplying but the KZN has always exactly. been violent on that level. It, it, they, it's still violent do you know, to this but day. But who supplied the weapons? That is the question. Because guns are not naturally from Africa. No, it's crazy enough. South Africa is the only country in Africa that produces its own weapons. It has the license. And did you know we're the only country in Africa OSHA has nuclear weapons? Let's be honest. Though, yeah, guys. nuclear. Military. We've had them for a long time. Mm. Don't get it confused. But, and they apparently but, they've but, been dis... This, they, they switched them off. Katakon, there's three. They deactivated them. Deactivated them. Yeah, but weapons are very important though. Let's not dismiss the use yeah. of weapons. Even though they're they important. Even though they're it's just the national security. The power. Dog, if they we're complaining about yeah. water <laughs> exactly. and lights, <laughs> we should be concerned about nuclear exactly. fucking so, shit. Uh, it's important. So what do, you take, what do you take on the gun violence in KZN that's happened? Like the taxi wars and everything. I think since then, because remember now, you're dealing with... It's stuck in the blood. You, 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 the Europeans, England, <laughs> sponsored. It's stuck in the blood. <laughs> no, <laughs> England, just no, know. relax. Don't be <laughs> mean, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. Everything changed. You know, we became Zulu when Shaga became king. So, Songa Sabangu. That's why I'm saying there's, there's so, so much. Saying, so you're saying this is... A, uh, uh, so I want to get back. Shaka it's Zulu. not a curse of Shaga Zulu as well. And also Shaga's perspective has always been twisted. Mm. Right. So in every, you must understand, this is a great man who was a great man in the time of hardship, in mm. a time of confusion, where most of his people were, were crossing over. Mm. We were losing ourselves. So he was trying to... To, to keep it. By losing but yourself, in perspective, mean, mean, like losing, we were, we, were, we were being stripped of who we are. That's why mm. I'm talking about this amnesia of losing yourself. Mm. Amnesia, being stripped. Because you, you, you got to undress me entirely. Mm. You, you first undress me internally. Mm. And then afterwards, I do it myself. Mm. That's why the, the greatest way to conquer a nation is by killing them within, they, after they fall. Mm. So you look at uh, today, one of my favorite artists and great philosophers, rest in peace, fortunate to meet him, Ukredo Moto of Usamazu. Yeah, he met him. I met yeah. him because of my music. The music journey led me to him. And, you know, he has a painting. One of my favorite paintings of his was, I can't remember, 70s or 80s. And he has one side of the frame. It's an ocean in the background. On the right side, the left side of the frame is a picture of a black ebony woman with African hair. Mm. Uh, normal, black mm. girl. And then on the other side, so there's a sun and there's an ear. And like the sun, the ear is in front of the sun. Mm. And the other side, this is like the 70s, is a black woman with the weave makeup. And for him, Umkulu was an artist who was also Isan Usu, a prophet. So his artwork would prophesize. So he wouldn't be like, oh, 19, uh, 9 11 is going to happen. He'd paint it or sing about it or write about it. So he painted the evolution of the black woman. Mm. He's like, oh, Njebe, can you langa? So this, when he painted this, this was not even a thing. So it, for Africa, as much as like most of us in 1980, we really didn't have access to weaves that much. Was, as much as the was diaspora SKL, was already you know? lit, yeah. but the transition, he's like the division. Oh, Jebe, Kanye Langa are going to create this division where the black woman, because the best way to kill a nation, that's the woman. You gotta go to the woman. That's why there's feminism. The mm. That's why most black. That's why feminism right. is working. I disagree. Working. She that's takes a strong disagree. influence in the household. I think the best way to kill a she nation is kids. to. I'll come back to it. It's to kill all the men yes, and then I you agree. left it the woman and children. No, separate. Think about divide. it. Think about it. The I agree with you. But if the men are there, can't get to the woman. No. That's why the men are not there. Remember, oh. the men were already gone. The men oh. left in the 1800s. Okay. They were told to go and mine. Yeah. The men left at 1800s already. 1800s, the men were leaving. Our great-grandfathers were leaving our great-grandmothers. Our grandfathers were leaving our grandmothers. It was already happening, right? But now you leave the woman alone, vulnerable. Because the men can go and come back. But what is the seed that is carrying mm. your seed? They raise the next what generation. What are you influencing? Yes. So that's why, because for me, I always say this. I, I always have a high concern. I think it's important to take care of both black people, the man and the woman, don't separate us because we're both disadvantaged. Mm. We both have trauma. We, we both, both need each other. Need each other. And yeah. That's why I can't, um, I can't participate in feminism. Feminism, the structure of it makes sense. Of course, we, 
we're equal but different. Ang pig log. But I am a black woman. I, I have a different storyline. I have my genetic code right. comes from people who are traumatized. Mm. I am a mother and have to change that. I'm also slightly traumatized, so I'm trying to change that division because it's a kazin. These were people who were traumatized or giving birth to people. Do, who are do you think that it has contributed to like the the whole phenomenon of single mothers? Feminism. Absolutely, because divide and conquer. Mm. Separate the family. So you must go and, and dig his glory and then you leave me behind. When you leave me behind, I have to hustle. Right. Because you're also MIA. I don't know, like money's not coming in. There's no e-wallet in 1970. Mm. You understand? So I become angry and I'm not I'm not okay. You so I'm, 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 a, I'm an angry mother to my children. Mm. I'm not even there. My kids don't even know me. You're raising them with trauma. Yeah, they don't even know me. And mm. then... Now I'm structuring them to try and be like the white man because he's in power. Because mm. I'm thinking the only way for me to live is to be like him. Yeah, and he looks like he's no. got his shit under control. The, the black women are the easiest to influence because they're they vulnerable. Definitely they're, because they to are the alone. Because they were alone for a very long time. And the black man was also alone. That's what I want to say. That's why I, 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 I have to bring in the division. My movement of feminism cannot mm. move with my movement of, of 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 uniting the black family because mm. everyone we, we, like I said again there's two binaries mm. you can't have the one without the other mm. so of course if I'm going to be raised without my father I'm going to be messed up and confused and traumatized mm. and my mother is a matriarch and she has to be strong and she is pressurizing me to also come out and be the strong person right. and I've never seen a happy home I've never seen a family before I've never seen the structure of all of this mm. so what kind of a person am I coming out to be in society Mm. You know, so there's a lot of trauma that black people have experienced and 500 years mm. of trauma and 500 years of amnesia, mm. literally. Earlier you, know? you said, earlier you said you've left the, the workforce to be able to be a mom. I did leave it for two years. Do you think that like, as a woman, do you think that it would be more, more women would be much happier if they were able to just be mothers and not be forced to go and work? Or do you think that um, they should be in the workplace during the day. They should be able to provide for themselves. They should be able to pay for stuff. They should be able to say, I don't need a man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's really crazy, you know, because I, for me, I, like I said, I, I, I changed my career, but within the same, because I wanted to be able to work and still be pregnant at seven months. I want to be on set. That's the thing. And I worked, I worked the last job I did. Is, is, the, is, the, is that healthy for the no, baby? No, let me tell you. Is it, is it, let me uh, tell you. So I was, I did uh, Nasty C when he got signed to Def Jam. I was assistant director for his documentary and the music video, There They Go. You were pregnant nice. at the time? I, mean, I was five months pregnant, but nobody knew. Damn. And I even fell on set. She mm. fell? I'm literally assisting Andrew Sandler, this director who's shot Chris Could Brown. Be fine. No, she's two years old. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. She's two years that, old. Like, this so is I, what I'm saying that like <laughs> it's not a healthy. So to that's go why, and, and and I'll tell you why because that said, I think this is also what I did to myself, and I think that's what we do to ourselves as women, as black women, because I've like I said, my structure has always been surrounded by white male dominated environments. Right. Then I transitioned into directorial space. So when I moved, I left Durban in 2018. I moved to Durban. Me and my brother have a company. Wait, hold on. Yo, gents, can you please keep it down just a bit? You know, I'm trying to. Yeah. So good. So me and my brother have a company, Sky Star Films. <laughs> so I went back to Durban and I was directing films. And I was like, okay, cool, because you're directing in the chair. So cinematography requires more because you're setting up, your, you're literally uh, syncing everyone, your team. Mm. So you're running around. The... Yeah, so directing was different because I could be solid. Here's the monitor in front of me mm. and I'm dealing with the narrative. But at that time, that job that I got, it was like a job you just got and was like, listen, it's Def Jam. Of course you want that on your title. Mm. Yeah. Of course I want to do Nazi's first international video in on South Africa mm. and be assistant director for the documentary as well with a great director who's worked with Lil Wayne, Asha, Chris Brown. What's the name of the director? Uh, um, his name is Andrew. Mm. Well, for which video was this? There They Go. There They Go. Oh, There They Go. Yeah. Okay. That was actually yeah, a pretty good video. video. That, was, yeah. that was crazy. I feel so like the visuals were better than the song. No, yeah, the visuals like, were crazy, no. bro. <laughs> The Durban <laughs> no. visuals, like they showed Durban no, so nicely. No, they killed yeah, it. Yeah. We yeah. killed it. We killed clean. it. We killed it. And there was also a docky as well. So we shot the video and the docky. You know. So and at that point for me, it, I believe that women can. I think human beings can mm. do whatever they want. Mm. That's why I wanted to be. I transition. So you still advise more girls to do what you did. You have to. If I'll tell you something. For me, I'll advise them not to, not to overreach and not to try and, 
and, prove and, a point. and prove a point. Because unfortunately, I was, I was, I was indoctrinated in an environment where I had to prove a but point. But be honest, I'm a black woman. be honest. If you had a man to say, listen, we don't need that check. We don't need that. <laughs> whatever that you get him from there, it's not worth it. Would you rather No, unfortunately home? for that department, maybe if I was a side, I don't know, if I was doing something I didn't love, I'd say yes, but I love it. So even if they said you were I taking care of... I love it. I love it. Because it's something Where I love. I love it. it. I was recording. I, I was recording. I was in the studio when I was like pregnant and I was also producing videos. You're recording music. Pregnant. Music and film. So my daughter was like very like loud. And so the help at home was like, no, it's because you were also, you were not settled. That's why when she came mm. out, she was like making a noise because you were in noise. You were in the studio. You were people. You were the crew. So I that think that... That can be good though. Like no. You can't talk about it like, like yeah, no, it it's is. acceptable. No, it's like, it if is. You, if it's you went what, through what it is, and she thinks it's good. good. What is, I, I, I'm here. I gave birth to a healthy child. And when I said I fell, I slipped and I fell. But it was in a position where you, and yeah. now I've, I've, I've fractured. It's, it, but you can, anything can happen. True, but anything can happen sitting at home. Have you not seen Final Destination? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we're dealing with probability here, right? What are the chances that something would happen if but you're just if sitting it, at home? It's gonna what happen, are the chances that you're going to trip at home. work? If dogs are chances. That's why but I agree. Happen, that's why you got to... That's why uh, 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 what Steph was saying is that for me, I'll tell you that whole moment there. There was a producer. The producer was working with Hype Williams. So we've got a producer who's also Damn. a cameraman. So he's like a G in the game. And I'm just trying mm. to impress this man. Mm. And then Andrew. Andrew's child. I'm, I'm, I'm working with him. I'm his assistant director. He's got a different energy. But the producer is the old guy in the game. He's been in it, you know. So at this point, as an assistant director, because I'm also trying to communicate language. Mm. Everybody else is American. I'm Zulu. So I have to now we're in Nessie's hood, the first one of the first places he recorded. Mm. <laughs> it's kids everywhere they wallin. And like there's a G like I have to coordinate like a G a G Wagon like scene. He comes out with his bouncers and he's coming into the old studio and his homies are waiting for him. But like to a certain level, if I'm the only one who's coordinating this, I can't control the crowd. I can't control if these guys are going to run quickly. Mm. So I had to go quickly assess the moment and quickly push them back so I can get necessary shot coming in. Sounds, sounds to me like you're putting yourself in danger. I don't it's know. Not I don't think about it. Ah, come it's on. not yeah, danger. Okay. I could have handled if she it. Went through I could have handled it differently. I know that. I could have I could have been like, okay, Andrew. Listen, I just hold I on. Just, I just think go to the people's buffet. I, I, just, I just think you're like so, delicate. <laughs> Especially when you're going through that time, I think it's very precious. And I think it should be very. I agree. Um, but Ria, Ria, think about it. She went through it, and she she's giving Ria, you a testimony. I'm, I'm, I'm a testimony that we, as every, as any human so being. So you're not just as strong. Is that what you're saying? Because that sounds that sounds like what you wanna say. I'm saying is that I am fortunate enough to be blessed that I was able in a time where I was apparently fragile, and I don't think that because I carried my daughter. You know, I was five months pregnant. I, I carried myself and I carried her. But I also did understand that if it's important for me to also still try to remain myself. Because remember, when I get pregnant, you, we are, we're both pregnant if you are my baby daddy, but now you're not carrying her, you know? So I also still have to remain myself. There's things that require me to continue as Imi in Ulast, to continue going and existing. Otherwise, I'm literally just uh, eggshell. Have you seen animals? Have you seen lions and lionesses? Have you seen nature? If you want to get confused about a woman, go look at nature. For me, if I learned my greatest power I ever learned and understood who I was is when I was pregnant and even giving birth and becoming a mom. I, I, I have never been the way I am today. I feel like, like that's the greatest thing The whole thing about entire experience ne- changed me and it grew me and... I, I surprised myself. Would I be wrong to say that that's the best thing about being a woman, being a mom? It is the most glorious moment is that you are exhaling life on earth, almost losing your own life. Mm. That's that's the experience mm. of like trauma. It's like you literally, you're wow. betting you, you, you're betting with your life and you're like, okay, cool. Right now, I'm about to go that's in. That's insane. Literally, betting I had three days life. of labor. Dude, I had a crazy birth experience. Three days of labor. I was 40 weeks in. My daughter was warm. She didn't want to leave my body. Mm-hmm. And I had an emergency section. And after three days, I literally, I was, it was me sitting on the crossroads waiting. It's either I'm going that side or that side. And I am a mad woman. That my whole experience from being, finding out I was pregnant to having my daughter to being a mother mm-hmm. is the most extraordinary, most grateful, most um, 
conquering, most uh, subtle, most scariest, most weirdest, because shit happens. Like, I'm sorry, these Instagram moms are lies. <laughs> they lie. I was looking they doing it for their hey, physics. <laughs> listen, I was sick, man. Fuck that shit. Like, you are, your body is not the same. Your mind is not the same. Your spirit is not the same. So I think something happens to women when we cross over, you know. And I understand why our parents and our mothers had to be so hard on us. Mm. That's for the first time I was like, oh ma, ish. Now I get it. It's oh connecting. ma. You know, mm. because it's like, come on. You're oh, literally, my. you're a life giver, mm. you know. So all you want to do is to make sure that life continues. Continues. I'm, I mean, I would love to continue talking about the uh, women and guy dynamics. Cross, but oh, I want to get into like what your work in the yeah. music is. I've seen you've done. There they go. You said it. Yeah, uh, what else have you done as far as behind the scenes? Like, I mean, I started off um, in Joburg. I was one of my closest friends. Shout out Director Kit. <laughs> Dopest mm. honey mm. in the game. She's a film director, advertising, music video. So me and her, we met at film school and we worked a lot together. So we started off like when WizKid, before WizKid was like essence, you know. So we did a lot of work with this company called Molotov Cocktail. Um, so we shot a lot of West African music videos, East African, so you your you AKAs. Shot kids. So I was Something camera assistant. Yeah, a lot. Like we did this couple of Wizkid. Like I think we did two. One with um, Inyana, I think. Mm. Sexy Mama. Yeah, it was a song. Na, na, na. And when the twer- first time before Faith and them were like big, we mm. had them, the twerk queens. They were on the video with us. We worked a lot with Faith. Um, so I did a lot of um, music videos, mm. a lot of South African content, a lot of TV show content. My first internship was yes, at the SAPC as well. Um, but it was mainly a lot of either camera assistant, focus polo or camera operator. Sometimes director, yeah. you know, but mainly it was always in the camera department. From the Movango to your Club 808s. Mm. I did it all, you know. Um, so yeah, so that's in terms of film wise, uh, that's the stuff I did. Mm. Um, yeah, until I went to Durban and then I became like full on music video director mm. like three years ago mm. so that was crazy and that was different because Durban is like so isolated it's not really an institute like Joburg mm. so you're you're dealing with artists in a very different conversation and command mm. and because we're Zulu so you're Zulu there you're Zulu in the business there's certain ways of speaking and certain ways of hustling and mm. certain ways of going through things you know so there are a lot of bad experiences I had there I got screwed over um, Wait, but, you got screwed over by who? Nah, not today. Another. <laughs> I mean, that's the type of information that we hear for. You know what I mean? Come on. Let's, go, Let's unscrew no. it. Let's unscrew it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, okay. No, another time. Oh, wait, we'll, that will do the full interviews. Oh. No, no. The, from, uh, what I'm saying is that, um, like I said, you when you... I did a lot of treatments. I pitched for a lot of artists. Mm. One of the artists, I won't say who, mm. but I... I worked with this one female DJ from Durban. Mm. <laughs> Devon Gogo. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I just went Devin straight Gogo. to the one that makes sense. <laughs> Devon Gogo. No, I worked with this one female DJ from Durban. Yeah. Um, and she came through like almost like on a last minute vibe. Like, let's do. You Is know, she because, like super famous? Yeah, super. Like, Is she yellow bone or she Ah, ah nah, come on. Is she yellow bone or she No. No, 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 not like that. So she's super famous. Babes, uh, babes nah, babes, she's my nigga, I love her. Nah, nah, not her. Like, I haven't worked with her yet. Soon and very soon we'll work together. Yeah. Um. So she comes through, she comes and pitches at the office. You know, we had a really dope space in Windermere, like... Everybody just wanted to like work with us, you know. So at the time, my, me and my brother, it was it's our company together. He produced and shoot and I directed. This, and this yeah, I was about to Not say. this one. There's 10 of us. At you know that this, this, guy's, ten, this guy's family ten, to the famous ten. people. Yeah, my bro. dad has 10 kids. 10. Don't think about that though. 10. 10. Your dad was in play. Your dad's a G. That's, nah, that's what's up. Man. That's what's 10 up. 10 of us. No, no, 10 of us. <laughs> so everybody, nah. it's like that was. A, so basically, she came through last minute vibes. She pitched her song. I was like, okay, cool. I worked on the treatments. I went to the location. She even like took my number. She asked my brother. She's like, I want to speak to your sister personally on the side. Like, I just want to get like her vibe. Like, I really like her ideas and her style and whatnot. Mm. She's like, oh, you got this whole avant-garde thing going on. That's what I'm trying to do. I dig it. And we prepped for the video. Literally on the day, the day of the shoot. Yeah. We've hired our team. We've hired everyone. We're supposed to be staying at this venue. And we're supposed to be shooting there in the Midlands. And... Not answering our phone calls, MIA. And then guess what? Two weeks later, mm. 
my concept is done by another company which I will not mention. <laughs> and they shot my like idea. Like the same exact concept. Mm. They shot my idea. Obviously, there's a few things they got to twist around. Yeah, but, but my treatment. Literally. Wow. Yeah. So, that, so for people which are trying to get into that scene, that's a normal thing. That's common business. In the. It's not the, okay though. Yeah, that's but a, that's a that's a thing that should they should know that that's what happens. That's what happens if you and and also so you can try and protect yourself as much as you can unless if you're really gonna try and rile up yourself for a fight. For me, I always think like I've got a lot of amazing ideas, and if you want to take me for that, mm. then you can have that. Yeah. You know, so there's certain things that I really don't think are necessary for a fight, but at least you know one day. So I think karma is karma. One day you'll come back to my doorstep. So mm. so music, you've always been making music even while doing the yeah, whole cinematography so stuff. Yeah, so crazy enough, guys, I'll share this story, which I don't think I have shared on any platform. So when I went to after, I came to after, I was 18 years old. Mm. Um, and one of my classmates yeah. was a Josie guy. He was a bit old. He was like 22 or something. And he was from Joburg. He used to drive like a Mini Cooper. He just seemed like the like, wow. I don't know. He knew not really. Like he's just oh, like, the, the nigger. like shady, but like he's got plugs. Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then somehow he heard through the grapevines, like I could sing. Because mm. after it was at film school. So we had a lot of showcases where we just get to perform, like show your case, you know, showcase your talent, yeah. whatnot, you know. And <laughs> basically this homie found out <laughs> showcase as you. So this homie found out I could sing, and he was also my homie. So he asked me if I want to do music. And I've never ever recorded in my whole life, never written anything. Yeah. Like I wrote, I had written like in my hip hop club in high school, like I wrote a poem or a few verses here and there, yeah. but like never really anything on the lyrical side. And he's like, no, there's some homies in Gatja Hong who want to like to do house. So I'm going to check them out. Like, ah, cool, sure, dog. Um, on the way, he plays me the beat and I start writing on the way to Gatja Hong from Auckland Park to Gatja Hong. By the time we got there, I was done writing for the first yeah. time in my life. Damn. It was wow. so weird. I still remember the song even. Mm. So I get there, we record the song. Two days later, he comes to school. He's like, yo, listen, dude, my homies think you're dope. Let's come to you to the studio. It was mm. Bula Shaga in town, like mm. on commissions, commercial or commissioner? Commissioner. Commissioner Street. Yeah, commissioner Street. See, mm. Bula Shaga music. You get into the building, go to the top. I get there, they put me in a booth. They're like, listen, they play different beats. Mm. And I'm having fun. This is like natural to me. I'm like, oh, this mm. is so dope. I'm in the studio, wood. I'm like 18 and cozy. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So you they say, stopped playing. Would you say they made the vibe? They, they like, yeah, they like they, they kept playing different beats and they're like do whatever mm. you know and like probably like four different beats had like freestyled on four different types mm. of beats and then afterwards he's like oh we've got uh, uh what did they used to call it then a demo mm. i'm like a demo what's a demo and they're like no nah, we just did a demo for you so i move on take it lightly two days later the homie's like yo at school he's like what would you like to do with music at the time i was a hip-hop fan mm. so i wanted to make hip-hop mm. super tomboy i was like i want hip-hop like mm. He's MC, so I was like, listen, I'd love to do like a mixtape with Zabs, Double H, P, Pover, Pro Kid. Mm. And At maybe, that time, they were the, the ish. Yeah, like 2009, mm. come on. Mm. You know, <laughs> so I was like, that's the people I'd love to work with, you know. Mm. And he's like, okay, cool, sure, whatever. You know, I cool. And he's like, listen, and then he takes me, he's like, let's go shopping. I'm like, what? He's like, mm. yeah, let's go get some clothes. You come here to Campus Square. Already? He's like, listen, I'm, I don't know anything. Like, mm. I'm just a kid. She's 18. I'm 18. I'm in first year. I'm just it sounds like an home. ambitious story. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we get some clothes. I pick some stuff. And then he's like, tomorrow, let's meet up. We're going to have our first meeting with Zabs. I'm like, what? Already. That's later. Already. <laughs> That's later. Zabs is like, we're prepping with you at Zabs. And then we're going afterwards, it's double HP. Like, they mm. had like a schedule. Bam. So I'm like, oh my God, my dreams are so coming true. You had literally, in the few weeks, you had management and uh, like studio, studio yeah, even. Immediately. Uh, yeah, after uh, the first tracks, all of it. So, the whole label, basically. Yeah, 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 Buying yeah. the clothes and everything. Yo, Come on, image. Yeah. That's a whole label, Image, bro. boy. <laughs> Dog. It's crazy. So I get there, and then we get to the office in the morning, and then the boss is like, yeah, what's up, Doug? Like, nice to meet you. So I meet the CEOs of the company. And then Le- Lelo's like, come to... <sighs> Lelo's like, come to... Mm. Um, come talk to me on the side. He's like, listen, before you do anything... Um, my CEO needs to speak to you. So I go into the office. They're like, listen, we've got a contract for you. We need you to sign this before you meet Zabs. I'm like, what am I signing? I don't know shit, guys. I'm just mm. here for school. Yeah. So he's like, no, listen, we, we want to represent you. So I remember in the contract, there was like 1.5 mil and a Mini Cooper, right? Ooh. So I'm like, So that's what shit. he got his Mini Cooper. Yes. Huh? Yeah, so it was a Mini Cooper family. It was, yo. Oh. <laughs> so that's what oh, I figured. Job, shit. Yeah, intelligent job. So 
I called my sister at 1. the time. One point five mil. Yeah, one point five mil signage. I called my sister at the time. She was at vet studying medicine. Yeah, she knows nothing about this life. I'm like, dude, oh my god, like these guys want me to sign. And she's like, dude, oh my god, funa and lapo, and you're supposed to be at school. But the teenager, hey boo, so what up? She's like, okay. I'm like, no, but I want to do music. She's like, okay, um, take that contract. Tomorrow we'll go to the because Vitz had like a law clinic. Oh thing. yes, where they do like, things let's pro go bono. There, they'll help us and mm. figure out right, before right, we sign. Yeah. Mm. And like read the contract for you. So bring it. They still do have it. They still have it at Vitz. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool, great, sure. She's like, I tell these guys, and they're like, nah. Then you're not meeting Zabs. You have to sign now or never. I'm like, but I don't understand the jargon. So I speak to Lelo. I'm like, yo, homie, dog. Like, what's happening? He's like, my nigga, I can't help you right now. You have to sign it. I can't do anything. Oh. You're the big guys. Shady Before shit. you could even say like, shit. Like, we yeah. drove to Norwood. Like, man was screaming at me in the car. Screaming. He's you like, sign it. You messed up. Huh? You no, listen, it. I'm getting there. Okay. You messed up. He's got the contract. How dare you? I had all these dreams about you. You're my product. And he was like, this being is weird. This is the big boss. This is not my this homie. This is the homie. Oh, Mini Cooper. Yeah, the homie. Yeah, he was getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cooper boy. <laughs> Cooper boy. <laughs> Bobby Cooper. But, hey. <laughs> yeah. So he was getting, clearly getting a cut or something. Mm. And I'm like, dog, like, like, I can't sign it. I told you. Like, uh, my instinct is telling me no right now. Mm. So I can't do it. And then he like leaves me in the car for like an hour, like locks his car, comes back. Think like, about yeah, it. He, he put you on so time out. excited. He loves your stuff. He heard you. So sad that you never get to work with him. And then I never signed but the contract. But if he loves your stuff, oh, then why would mm. Yo, what a Well, I mean, because he, they were my, I'm, I'm a kid. I don't know anything. Yeah. Like, they were your breakthrough. <laughs> you know, so he's like, yeah. You know, so that was like 18. And then after that, like somehow things just started opening. So uh, a homie from PMB, was living in Marvel, the same apartment as me, was like, yo, dude, please come feature my song. So I did the first, my first official like hip hop feature. Mm. And that was the story where I became a hooker. I always tell people yeah, that. Like a hooker? Like a hoe? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, like oh. a hip hop hoe. Okay. Oh, no, like hooks. Okay. Oh. So I was like doing a lot. Master. After that, I started like doing like so many hooks. Can't you get a better name for that? Yeah. 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 No, hooker. No, 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 hook right? master. <laughs> yeah. Hook master. <laughs> no, like even every time. Hook master. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, hook master. Yeah, hook master. I became a hooker. I was like, damn. A hoe. It sounds interesting. I'm just in the studio. No, I started like doing a lot of hooks. So after that, like, I was I was even in the studio with Ishmael once upon a time at Ghetto Rough, guys. I was mm. there at Motherland, wow. you know. Um, but yeah, I just started out like doing a whole lot of hookers, hooks. No. <laughs> Ish. Damn, I think you want some hookers. No, I don't. Like, so I love I, me some hookers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I ended up doing a lot of hooks for hip hop and a few house tracks in between. Mm. Then fast forward, I graduate. So mm. when I graduated in my honors year, one of my classmates, Charlie Ryder, was in my cinematography class. He was like one of the best. His movie was nominated for an Oscar, student Oscar, so dope. And he's like, dog, I heard you sing. I'm like, yeah. He's like, listen, next year, he's like, his honors thesis was based on creating a concept of an original South African music duo, which is like the envoy, but actually represents South Africa. Mm. So he's like, I want to work like with you. Like special ground some type of thing. No. I'm a near electronic girl, so hybrid stuff. Mm. Like, I love that bass. Like, in fresh grounds to alternative. It's more like on, like a, on a house level. So we'll EDM. get there. We'll break it down. Mm. Not even EDM. Mm. E- electronic. Because electronic music spans from piano to green right. to house. That's to only anything. electronic. Yeah. Electronic. Afro house and yeah. all this stuff. So it's neo. Like, we'll get there. We'll mm. get there. So he's like, yo, I want you to, I want to work with you. He makes me sing for him. I sing for him. He's like, cool, cool, cool. He calls me like end of third, end of honors year, the following year. He's like, yo, let's meet up. He meets up. He had this whole, because it was his thesis. So he already had the idea of what he wants. So I told him at the time for me, my interest laid a lot in Umkul of Usama Zulu's work. So I told him that, like, I really want to, like, speak and work about this man. I want to talk about his work. And because his work is about the memory of our greatness as black people. So if I'm going to do this with you, then let me share the side of me here. Because the sound seems like it's going to be on that, you know, transcendent, skeletical mm. level. Yeah. So let's do the cyber thing together, you know. So then... They introduced me to Freddy Fandango. Freddy Fandango was like number two on Idols a couple of years ago. Mm. Really great artist, producer, writer. We met, the first day we met, we wrote People of the Sky, which was the first single we did with um, Nero Vault. So we were, we made like a four track EP. Um, we worked with a store producer called Stefan at Open oh, Studios. Ah, Steph. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, uh, he's in Australia now, amazing uh, producer. Um, 
We shot an amazing music video as well, which most of the visuals of the video were inspired by Credo Motor's work. So all mm. of our, well, as most of the work, the embodiment of it was like, like a reimagination of Mkulu's work. Mm. So from some of the scenes of the video looked like the sculptors, mm. you know, um, the wardrobe, uh, the visuals, the narrative, all mm. of it together. Um, and then in between that, so I do near Vals, and then at the time I just left varsity. So I'm literally hanging out in Bramfontein at the turning turning point mm. of that era. So this is like before there was Great Dead in Kitchener's, it was just Kitchener's, mm. you know, when Malum Kuka used to be a DJ at Kitchener's. Right, you know? right. You know, Ricky had just came back from Europe. The mm. Boys and Bucks was amalgamating. Dr. Just Pachanga like 20, was a Jola. Mm. No, 2013. Mm. Damn, 2013. Yeah, 13. Mm. Oh, this is like after Dirty Paraffin time. This huh? is during Dirty Paraffin. Oh, okay. This is like during Dirty, peak yeah. of Dirty Paraffin. Um, hanging out, I meet the homies who all become homies. Mm. Where did um, you meet up? Like, did you... Is Kishners. it like... Con and the... Pearl. The first time, Kishners. actually, I won't like... Can so I tell Kishners you something? Was the spot. I'll tell you something. Something, someone... I can't remember. Oh, Sabringo. Sabringo, a friend of mine. He was like, he saw the dopest. He went to the dopest show in Newtown. No surprise. 2013. He said he saw the dopest performance he's ever seen in his life. Malum Kulket. Kulket. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's Malum Kulket. Who's surprised? We're like, Kazali, a performance in Newtown. He describes it. And he's, I was like, oh my God, I want to see it. Then somehow I got a, to shoot with Supreme Being. Shout out Brian Goldsuit. We got to shoot with Supreme Being. And hey, you're calling your mob ties yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, he, he, you know the whole of oh, Joe. No. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I've got to shout out. Shout out, shout out, out which boys. You know, everybody, shout out, which boys. Everybody in the entertainment industry. Not everybody. Like, I've got my people. I don't know everybody, guys. Just my people. Those who I know. The whole so, Joe is your people. Eh? Yeah. No, like some of them. Okay. You know, the influential of side of Joe Yeah, those who I, I know. Mm. <laughs> So, I'm telling you. Uh, so I shoot this uh, thing with, uh, and I remember that's the first time I saw Dirty Paraffin perform. So I'm like, yo, Supreme was talking about this homie because you just hear it, you see mm. it, you know. So we all met up, we became homies. And then um, fast forward, so uh, me and Ricky mm. went to after. So I mm. was in first year, he was my senior in third year. Yeah. Mm. You know, so. How so, was Ricky at school, like at after? He what, was like was, the famous. Was Hot boy. Everybody hey. wanted. Like, I'll tell you right now, like, he was the hot boy. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, was like, what's up, man? girls? <laughs> but yeah, it was, like, the crazy there. He was like... <laughs> he, okay, okay, let's do it like this. Ish. No, Teacher, he was like... I remember, I remember one of his Ish. first tracks, like, he had it after, like, it was Zamalek. Like, he had the song about Black Label. Mm. Right. It was after. It was, like, Zamalek. But he was, like, very... His whole, like, th like vibe was very, like... Crunk ish, like American ish, Keep swaggy, beautiful boy, you know, you know, that vibe driving a beamer, you know, he was the oh, cool he was driving kid like a M3 or something. I'm so cool, but he was driving a like BMW, mm. something there, something there. Um, but he was like my senior, you know. Mm. Um, so he, we all we all interacted I, at showcase. All the artists that after got to perform as much as a cinematographer, but sometimes end of the term, I got to sing on stage. Mm. So we were all part of showcase together. Mm. So I meet him again now. He's home. He's with everybody, with the boys in the box, you mm. know. So um, I'm busy with Nero Vault. Somehow, you know, homie calls him, not him in particular, but somehow time crescendos. I don't even know. Actually, can I just have a pause? This one is a very difficult one for me to like continue. Mm -hmm. But um, can we pause? Why? You can huh? breathe. You can breathe. It's can fine. I just breathe for a moment? <laughs> because I'm getting into this one. Um, this one is hectic one. No, take the breather. Yo, yo, my guy, famous people. Come come here. Come through, come through, Sabs. Just stand here. Dude, like they're famous. <laughs> their family so famous. This guy's take a video of us. I was like, come no, back. my guy, you actually famous. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> Guys, don't you know this face? This bro? guy sells you chocolates, pizza. <laughs> uh, oh, that mustache. F and B. It's a salesman now thing. BP, BP garage attendant. Oh, yeah, I'll be pouring that and petrol. And Disney, Disney, six tags. Hey, Disney. is that the why our petrol are like killing us right now? That's amazing. Right now, Disney Africa <laughs> animation. The premium cast. Yesterday's cares. price is not today's price. All that BP. Did you get it? Shout out to Jay. No, and that's her brother. Like one of bro. her brothers. Yeah, one of. One of. I've got six of them. That's crazy. That's crazy, though. Yeah, that's six dope. of them. So, as you were saying, like, so, the link up. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So I was chilling at my homie's spot, director Kit, shout out. Mm. Um, we're chilling at her spot and Usaned, mm -hmm. Poison Box, aka Snitch. 
He what? calls snitch. Did he That's call his... himself snitch? No, so snitch. I can mean oh. snitch is never call snitch. So suddenly so snitch. Was um, he in hip hop? Call himself snitch. He's well, tight MC. Tight MC snitch. Called himself snitch. <laughs> How did that yeah. work? Out? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> snitch. Mm. Um. So suddenly so calls me up. He's like, "Where you at?" Because me and him are like slightly closer in mm-hmm. the squad of boys and bucks. So he knew a little bit Kosobi. So, so my first name was Usani as well. So we had to connect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he knew like that I was busy with music and stuff. Um, so he calls me up. He's like, yo, come to, to the studio. We're actually at Ganges in Kilani. So my homie lives literally like two minutes away mm. down the road from Ganja Beats. And mm. I had met Ganja Beats through Uslim, who used to be Ricky's DJ. Mm-hmm. So I met the homies and two of the homies actually went to after. They were my seniors in the same year as Ricky. Mm. Um, so we come to me and kids, we get to Ganja's studio because I'm thinking Sanelo wants to work with me, right? I walk into Ganja's studio. Mm. Ricky, I come into the room. Sanelo sitting there at the back of the car. It's just Ricky, it's Dimples, Ganja. Damn. Younger. It was, who was Dimples. It? Yeah, R.I.P. Ricky, R.I.P. Dimples. Mm. So then Ricky's like, yeah, ah, I want you to... I'm like, okay, so I'm like, yo, I'm here now. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to wave a sender. I'm like, yo, sender, the show is. Nikki's like, hey, what's that? I want you to sound like a ratchet girl from Durban. So I'm like, <laughs> just from the entrance. This? I'm like, what? That's now, the best thing you my say. ego is crushed because I'm a musician. <laughs> yeah. I'm a what type of music were you doing? I'm making neo electronic Alternative stuff, you know? Neo electronic stuff. Afro futuristic. So, so were you, like, were you more motor. offended by the ratchet, the ratchet. By the ratchet or and him I'll telling tell you, you what to do? No, oh, the ratchet Zulu okay. girl. First, I'll start there. First one. Yeah. The ratchet Zulu Stereotype. Girl. Because at the time, I was like, obviously these homies I've been hanging with, I've been grooving with. She so back to like, yeah, me. Mm. Oh, that's how they see you. Mm. Yeah, they're they're like, like, she's perfect. So ratchet yeah. Zulu girl. So I'm like, but now I'm I'm not alone. I'm here with my closer homie. Suzy mm. closer homie. Mm. We been song a Sunday gum song. Mm. You know, so I'm like, okay. And he's like, no, I want you to sound like a ratchet Zulu girl. So I'm like, ugh. So Ricky wrote the hook of Upa Zong. He already had written anything. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So this is when you walked in. Upa Zong oh, yeah. was playing. Uh, Not nothing playing. He's just um, shaba nge pe 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 Talking to me last year. I'm, sh- I'm recording at Open Room. So, Open you Room, know? there's a Grammy in there. They've got Grammy Award winning artists. So, Don't talk to last year like recorded that. So, I'm in the same microphone as what? a Grammy winner. So, I'm like, please. I mean, talking. like, you've touched, you've touched international status. Come on, come on. Mm. Come on. Point. I got the best in the game. Mm. I'm killing it. So, I'm like, oh, you know, like, what's this homie talking about? Like, mm. do you know me? You know what I do? Mm. Um, so, you guys are having a back and forth. Because I want to speak. Like, what is speak. Big big is like argument. Mm. Mm. Like, uh, a okay. little rebellion. Okay. So, between me, Ricky, and Ganja. Because now Ganja's in between. He is the engineer. Mm. Right? So, if anybody didn't know, Ricky made the beat of Upa Zong. He produced the beat. Right? So, we're recording at... Um, uh, Ganja Pizza Studio. So we back and forth, and oh, now, how long? like for like thirty minutes, the first part, part one, eighty minutes. So you guys, oh, well, <laughs> funny enough, you were introducing yourself to a lot of people in that room. Yeah. Already, you are fighting with Ricky for thirty minutes or arguing. Yes, well, because I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it this way. So I'm like, listen, he he does, he he recites the hook for me. Mm. He does the hook, he does it, he does it. I'm like, oh, okay, but I'm like, I want to do it this way. Mm. Because I sing. Okay, let's do it like this. So I'm like, I want to, I want to do like. Bazanke, basnanke, agananda ba uneha ba guama shuna semlazi umswe ngoba yamazi. So that was like me. I'm like, that's me. That kind of slaps. Yeah, you can actually do a cover version of that one. So I'm like, that's me. That's what I hear. I'm like, I hear young Brenda like. Up you know? in this, like, you know. Mm. And he's like, no, 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 that's dope. Kanji's like, yeah, that's dope, mm. that's dope. But like, Ish. he's like, but I hear this ratchet Zulu girl. Mm. So I'm like, no. So me and Ganja go outside. We have a young session. Mm. He's like, okay, cool. Listen, you go back inside. We go record it like the way you like it. So I recorded my version. Mm. And then Ricky's like, but Senator, can you also do it like my mm. way? So I struggle to do it because there's no energy in mm. it. So for me, I'm the kind of artist I work with energy, emotion mm. and feeling. Mm. I have to plug myself in everything. Mm. Everything. If it's not all plugged in, it's not going to happen. Mm. 
by that time you because of the wretched girl thing your self esteem is yeah, low yeah. you're already frustrated like, because, because you're all I think about oh naming ambangeta that's the whole thing like yeah yeah oh naming and that's exactly what you wanted yeah. that's what you wanted. that was that's literally exactly what you wanted. like oh puma hamba yeta na ngoma hamba yeta and i'm like what? the dj kyo vibe does yeah. this stuff in hip hop i was mm. confused mm. i was like what is this what is wiki doing mm. what, what do you want so you knew what he what you was doing you like he knew he saw exactly. the He had the vision and yeah. like it's crazy like he really had the vision. Mm. So and this was like before Babes or two more like you understand mm-hmm. like just a few months or a year before Babes and them came out. So I'm like this is also in hip hop. What is Ami trying to do? Mm. So then my friend Kitty's like yo Celere. It's just Shory. So Shory is like a closer So most of my friends are closer. Shory is a closer term which means like confidence, ugzaz, mm. like assurance, mm. shorty. So she's like shorty. So when oh. she said shorty, I switched, man, and got the hook. Bosonke, bosnonke, I got nanda, ba une hab. Cuz she's like switch. She's like right. shorty. So shorty <laughs> gave the character. Yeah. Right. I was like, "Oh, okay." It clicked in your brain like, "Oh, yeah. okay, this is how I, I was like, "Oh, it. that's how I'm supposed to do." Yeah. Like with the assurance. Mm. Okay, I got it. And we had the hook. Um Can I just stop you there when you laced it like that word shory did you hear ricky's idea like did you didn't make yes, sense yes it same made time. sense same it, 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 but still I, my friend made sense Cause she just right. she mm. just tuned me. She's like my nigga, mm. it's me. Mm. And like she's like, yo, listen duh, to me. Listen to me. This is how you do it. Mm. Right. So she tuned me there because she's like, give them. Let's Shout give them both friend. options. Yeah, no, not gonna have boss donkey without your my friend. My nigga, a lot of things like if Kitty direct to kid like <laughs> mm. a lot. So she was like, it should. And then I did it. Like, can can, can you please just like. Just the quick. I want to make sure that it's you. You know what I you mean? You know, of course. This is like always. Okay, let's see. Bosonke, bosnonke, agananda ba uneha ba kwama shu na semlazi umswenko ba yamazi. Hey, Everything I do, I do, they wanna do. Oh, hey, they wanna do. Oh, Everything I say, they wanna say to you. My turn, dog. Nigga, I'm double HP and drum beats. Now fuck up, party is on six. I skip so don't miss, no miss. They don't mix. They don't mix. I'm up to my own tricks. So I walked in, he was recording that part. That was that verse. <laughs> What's that? What's that? No. that was that verse when I came into the studio. He was like finishing that part off. So, um, so he was he was off that hype. He was in it, and, and literally that's recorded, why he came to you. He was said, here. Mm. When I recorded, he was here because Ganja Ganja also was an engineer. Because Ricky's like it's one of those artists he wants to see his work. Has to be fully involved. Mm. You know, yeah. like yeah. So he was here. He's like you know like me and you need to get here and it was like okay and the whole time dimples i remember dimples was like nah give us the ratchet zulu gang <laughs> they can't give us the ratchet because he's, they had a vision ricky mm. had a vision and i at the time i couldn't see it mm. and because maybe because i didn't want to associate that side with me mm. as well right. because i was Brandy. also yeah but and because that side seemed you know whatever mm. so i did not see the vision so fast forward two weeks later he calls me up he's like yo listen Um I left Motive Records because at the time I don't know what was happening but he had some connection with uh, Motive Records to me in the beginning right mm-hmm. and he's like I'm leaving I have to re-record the song with you again from scratch because I'm not with them anymore mm. and I've got these homies in Mopark it's me and you and you know the part um Usaba and you said myself up saying he's like I want you to do that part now mm. and there's more it's me and you fine fast forward oh, sorry sorry about Motive I know a producer which once told me that he thinks that Motive uh worst mistake with Ricky was not believing in boss song. Yes, that's exactly what happened because literally a plang she saw on a week or two weeks later because I was even confused. You can imagine that t- that time guys 2014. Mm. Hip hop was not really in South Africa in particular hadn't transitioned to that level where it's an expression again mm. to to be ready for anything again mm. because mm. it has its phase where it's like okay cool you had squatter camp you know umoy expression mm. you know umoy Yeah. You know, got this female beautiful like harmonic voice. Um what's his name? Slick is talking about like George Bush, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's lit. And for me When that was Slicker like a was hard. Slicker, what? Umoya but first okay. Umoya is one of the greatest songs. It's literally one of the Umoya greatest is one of the best songs. songs of all time. It's an African like, classic for like, sure. Classic. So mm. Ricky was in the transition and I think even uh, the space around him from the influence of 
Oh, Smi, so, because Smi, so, oh, cool cats, Pectolas, cool cats, aka cool cats, Pectolas is aka. Mm. So, I think at the time, you know, because Smi, so's whole form mm. that he began, he came out with was, first of all, if you guys didn't know, Umalum Cool Cats is actually, when I was a kid, because like radio was a big thing. Mm. My mom loved radio and television. So we used to listen to, on Saturday, who calls the Let's FM continue, had a DJ. Umalum Kul Ket. Mm. A DJ. There was a DJ called mm. Umalum Kul Ket. On who calls. Mm. And every Saturday, in Ghana's iPhone had cons. So cons, you'd call and be like, how am I going to call? I'm going to call. I'm going to call. I'm going to call. My friend from Josie. Yeah. Burundi, <laughs> shout out. You know what I'm saying. I'm going to call. I'm going to call. So Umalum Kul Ket used to be like, that homie, Lelo Anke, Lelo Razo, on who calls yeah, the FM. Um, so, yeah, so who, the time when Bozonga came about was also a very interesting time for music culture everywhere mm. and in the diaspora. And I say for the black influence everywhere, because I remember watching a documentary in 2013 called The Influences, mm. which is crazy because like influences today now are people who pretend to be something else to be cool or to be an influential. But like before then, influencer was just like, you guys like you just yourself and you have freedom of speech and people want to follow you because mm. of that so when I saw the star kid was about we're like hip hop back. yeah just on um, you bring sure, it sure, back sure 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 so it was an uprising mm. of a change mm. big transition before the the, the return of e sound because mm. Durban had the Durban Guaito mm. Right, so Big Nas and the guys from Afro mm. and oh, Bong see, no Zeke see, mm. no Bong Squatty, you know. But then there was like a moment of, uh, I don't know, like uh, what do they call it, purgatory. So like between heaven and hell, mm. you know. So then that was transition. Not, was the, between the lines. Yeah, so it was dope to see visuals from Cool Cat and Dirty Paraffin, them resembling, um, oh, 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 oh Loku and Joe Brothers of Peace, which is the... the I don't know, it's not Maskandi, but I forgot what the genre of Zulu music is. Khatamiya. Yeah. No, no, Khatamiya. That's Mambazu. They were like, I remember Mpakang, I think. Mm. And they were dressed in like, Jenga Matatata. So Matatata was like Italiano, mm. like, but like, you know, Zulu Italiano, years. like Zulu mm. Daga, like, I call him Nita So, yeah, mm. yeah. So, it, it, the visuals started being curated around our culture mm. and around the expression of our culture. So, I was like, hey man, this is homie, what is he doing? So fun. He calls me, he's like, okay, cool, fine, let's re record it. And this is Bosonke. Bosonke, right? right? So then we don't re record it. Mm. Fast forward, my brother who's not here, Lindani, he calls me, he's like, oh, don't you tell me on the studio, with Ricky? I'm like, yeah. He's like, go on Instagram right now. I think I heard your voice. Mm. So I go on the gram and I see, like, it's um, on a screen, computer, it's like a video of a computer screen, like mixing and mastering mm. of my voice. And it's like the hook buzz on, get buzz on. So I call Rick and first how oh, first you see, go up and say so. Mm, that's great. Mm. Mm. Got to get car. <laughs> and now like I saw the cool just run far online. Mm. Mm. But now your Zulu just came oh. out. It's <laughs> like you just felt where you were at that day. Yeah, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> you relive the experience. <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, first I'm gonna zoom, so cool. I'm just letting him feel the stuff. I'm gonna test it. For no good, but seeing back to early and get out. Okay, sure. But so he was just like teasing it. That's what he. Yes. Pretty it, much. Like a snippet. Yeah, yeah snippet. that was a snippet. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then like three months down the line, the song was on radio. So in between all of that, like me and Ricky were fine. Like we'd hang out. I'd mm. see him. Yeah. I spent his birthday with him that year. Like literally, it was so crazy. I, I walked into, I think it was Congo at the time. That club kept changing. When I, I got to Joburg, it was Latinova. No, Sumo, yeah, it was Sumo at the time. Latinova Sumo, get there. He's like, oh, boy, boy, we can send no more to. So we were fine. We were mm. cool. We were people. Um, nothing was weird. Mm. Um, and then fast forward towards the end of the year, I think end of November, going mm-hmm. into December. Mm. I start getting calls from everyone, like, dude, like, I think your voice is on radio. I'm mm. like, no, that's not true, because, like, Ricky's like, nah, yeah, let we me know. Spoke. We're still, mm. like, come on, that's not true. So, uh, if it's in cleaning gears, and I'm going, huh? you know, so I call him up, he's not responsive. But then, fast forward, I, I'm a cinematographer, so I do a job in PLK. It was called, it was a homecoming picnic era. So, they used to have one in Bologuane, mm. end of the year. Mm. So, I was shooting that for another private company. Um, and here I am in VIP, rolling a camera, rolling, ooh, Nangurik, in VIP, December, like a year, like maybe two weeks since the song's been on radio. 
and I'm like, yo, bro, I was sin. I know, could have to bring so cool man now. Yeah, but it's just that certain things went ahead. My team wanted to release. They were really sure. hopeful of the song. So mm. what were you hoping for exactly? Like, were you hoping to be featured on the song? Or were you hoping that he At would that just point. let you know? Or were you ho- what, what did you want from him exactly? Okay, so the conversation me and him had was that this music is very different to what I'm doing right now. But I want to do it because it's going to allow me to also breach out as an artist. Mm. It, there's nothing wrong for me to peek on this side of the world and also peek in this side. Because mm. that's what I am. I'm, I'm making music right now. Mm. So uh, as long as you don't leave me behind. Mm. We're here, I'm here with you. Mm. So however it's going to transition. So you wanted to go on the journey with him. Yeah, because it's us. Mm. Like it's okay. my voice. Yeah. That's, that's words. But like how would so you do words. that? Through features or what? Okay, now the thing is, is like, uh, okay, let me be specific. So another big thing that happened in the making of Bozo and is that I always like, so when I had this interview like a couple of years ago with a couple of radio stations and people, obviously, I always shared this um, story, which I'll share to other artists and people in general. Mm. You, there's a certain time when you can get hyped by a moment and then you overlook everything else that's important. Mm. Right. So I came in there feeling some type of way. Then I ended up delivering though. You know, mm. and because of that decision I made, which was my mistake, and for every artist, you don't go into a studio or any space not knowing what you're going to get at the end of the day, even though you can confirm it with your verbal sense, but there's no, there was no signing, there was no paperwork. But the only confirmation we had, Ricky was like, it's me and you on this song. So I'm expecting this homie knows that I'm also an artist right now and I'm busy creating. I was very clear in terms of the sound I'm doing, but if I'm going to be involved in the sound, let me be fully involved. If this song is me and you, then mm. let's go all the way. So that was the verbal discussion between okay. me and the artist. Mm. And then there's other entities that surround an artist as well. And vice versa from my side. Mm. So the, the problem is that because the music industry is so messed, that it's, it's an old tale. Mm. It's an old tale. You come in, you make music, there's no contract. And then the music is out. Because if I come in here and I got, I've got a beat and I make everybody record here, I have control because I have everything. I own the rights to everything. I've called you here. So obviously I have control of where everything goes. Mm. So at this point, I have no, I only have a verbal conversation and right, right. agreement. But I, there's a nothing to protect friendship. me. There's Literally. nothing. And I'm, my, my hope is the fact that this is my homie. I'm fair too. I've known this homie since I was in Boston. You're you just hoping you were going to keep his word. Yeah. That's and it. I'm not trying to you even like, word and and that's all, yeah. I just want, like, I'm right here. I did the hook. We on. I'm, I'm happy that you're trying to get on this vibe. But mm. And I'm it. not going to lie, that hook made that song. Bro. That's the sad part. <laughs> that hook actually made, that's the catchiest part of the song. No, I know. And he, he he did an amazing job writing and I did an amazing job producing and delivering. finishing, delivering yeah. it. Because it, it was, it, there was no way, because at some point, that's all I was trying to get, at some point, so like okay. fast forward, you saw, you saw each other the, and then the conversation. I see him, the conversation happens. I'm like, I'm fair, it's just seen. I see him, I need to sort things out with obviously other parties. Mm. But I'm with you. Like, I'm like, but you could have told me about if I'm going to be on radio. And he's like, how does it feel to hear yourself for the first time? I'm like, it's overwhelming. But it's weird because I didn't know I was going to be on, dog. You know, so I'm cool. But like, just talk to me. Where the coins at? Forget coins at this point. You're not, I'm really not cons- that person. You're not really that person. For me about right the now, coins. I know the coins are going to come. We did it. Yeah. Mm. Like, of course, the coins are coming. Mm. But right now, for me, I just want us to know that we're on par. Yeah. We're like, on the same Lao page. when it has to do with the song, I must be there. Mm. Like, just sync with me because you've got my voice. It's my intellectual property. It is my soul. You mm. have a piece of me with you. So mm. now do not leave me behind. So fast forward into Jan, it's like, sure, cool. Fast forward to Jan, I call him. Misunderstanding once again. And I think at this point as well, he's also an independent artist. He's building his entire brand independently. Mm. And you're also starting to get different voices and different sources around you. When you now, because now the song is, is burning. Mm. People are burning. There's a lot of big, external. Yeah, there's a lot of extern- yeah, external no. pressures. Influences. Also and, influence. Yeah. So I, I could tell things were different, you know. Yeah. But so how was the relationship at, between you two at that point? Was it ten, was it tension? So at that point, like I'll tell you the crazy part. So because I'm a filmmaker, so I went to Ricky's album launch. So now at this point, like my managers get involved from Near Vault. They call those people. There's a contract sent between the two, and then mm. the contract that was sent, you know. It was basically, if I sign this contract, I have no rights to any, anything. Mm. 
and he'll give me a specific amount of fee and I sign myself off the song and it mm. belongs to him and the How much was of payment? The f- payment was ridiculous. It was 3,500 rand. And what? I never signed the contract till to this day. I've never signed the contract. I've never signed a contract like with Bozo. Like 3.5. Until to this day. Because oh. session, <laughs> session fee. So, because, it's so usually, you know, you get paid for session. No, no. <laughs> it's Like I said, it's the old, it's things in the book, the old text. You get to a certain point, certain people see that you're in a certain position, then they start influencing you for their own points. Mm. So I think he was in the wrong place with the wrong people at the time. Right. And I happened to be, to be the negative receiving side of that moment mm. of his. Collateral damage. Yeah, collateral damage. So, yeah. I never signed. My team refused me. So, I also didn't want to sign mm-hmm. um, as well. Then, fast forward into the game. Um, I get to, because I was working with Club at the time. So, but tell me, as you listen to yourself, while Trauma. this is happening, and you see that there's mu- the music video wasn't out, right? No, but it so, was shot like in Feb. So, While I was shooting... Funny enough, I was shooting some of the scenes for Muson Kofante and he was shooting Bazonke. So while this was all happening, how was it being behind the scenes? Family members doing the oh, this no, is your trauma. Voice. So my nieces, I had nieces. They're like, oh, but Sonia, they're like, you know, when the video came out in particular. So now, I'm sure you guys have seen the video. This yeah. DJ do up sitting on the... On the kushesha. On the kushesha. <laughs> if, if you don't know, you would actually think do up is the one that's actually no, seeing that No, my nieces project. and my family were like, but no, that's not you. That's, that's not you. <laughs> but you guys, you and, <laughs> wasn't do, you and do up friends though. <laughs> so that was also another, that's also another conversation for another day. <laughs> mm. So yeah, she knew it was me. I, like, I knew it was when she did the video, but me and her got cool afterwards. It's mm. life, it happens. Mm. Things, like the, our industry guys, our moment. industry was, was so dumb. Dark. Mm. I'll tell you something. I understand you so dark and it's so difficult it's, that you find yourself doing things that you don't expect yourself to be doing. Yeah. And that's what happened people. with that. To the closest people because me and her were tight, especially in that time. Mm. So for her, it was a, a, a very strange experience mm. for me to watch her do it. Mm. You know, but I, I accepted it and I forgave her for it as well. Mm. You know, and she also apologized. Mm. She came to me eventually and we spoke about it. And we, we healed from that moment, mm. you know, in understanding. Because mm. people are different. I'm very fortunate as well to have my own way of dealing with things. Mm. So, fast forward anyway, uh, the launch of Bozonga happens. I'm shooting with Club 808. I get there. I'm shooting. My day I arrive on set, they're like telling me, we're going to go shoot Ricky's album. Yo, yeah. what? Like now, your, your, your past five. creeping <laughs> up on you. <laughs> check, check number five. Check five. Bozonga's check five. <laughs> Fortunately enough, my name and surname is on the credits. Sanel Mkiz, it's there. Track 5, mm. Family Value. How do you he feel, to, how do you feel I, towards I, him at this point? Do you have like let's, resentment? Let's, let's we're, getting, we're getting there. I want to get there. Let me try and fast forward. So fast forward, complications, complications, the rise of Ricky. Complications, complications, the rise of Ricky. Between me and him, every time we meet, it's, it's, it's a misunderstanding. Tense. We can't communicate. We, because we also have mutual friends. We work in the same space. Mm. Mm. We are going to keep bumping to each other. Mm. You know? Um, and then, and then a few years later, one of my friends was doing a show with BET and he's like, listen, I'm working with uh, Bianca right now. Mm. And I think if this you spoke to her, Ricky's, Ricky's wife. significant other. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So he's like, if you spoke to her, I think maybe you could reach him. Mm. Cause me and Ricky couldn't speak to yeah. each other. So I was like, okay, cool. Fine. Let's do it. Call Bianca. We text each other. She's like, listen, I'm going to try and get you and Ricky to sit down. I know your story. I know he's told me about you guys. I want us to solve this problem. Mm. You know? So she was the inter, the mediator, the other facilitator. Of- facilitator mm. at that time. And then, obviously, times go by. Ricky doesn't have time. Life happens. Yeah, I know. After that Bosonke song. Yeah, and Ricky this was, was like, this is like maybe three years after Bosonke, me and Bianca speaking. You understand? It's yeah. like, mm. it's been a while. You know, so, so what were you doing at that point? Okay, in between in all career. of that, in my career, in between all of that. So after Pozonke, my team, my manager, who, who was a manager at the time with Triple T, right? Productions, they were publishers. Um, my friend and director and manager, director kid, they opened a record, well, not record, they opened a publishing house basically so that I can produce. So I did a single after that Umaraza called Igesi. So mm. it was like my comeback. Mm. You know, that, that was dope. Beautiful video, mm. dope, dope song. I did that with Maraza and then I worked on my AP, mm. um, Izalul, mm. with uh, Triple T. And that's when I did Back to the Future mm. and Jumanji and all those other music mm. that I have. So that's when I officially started producing music that fulfills my identity as me. So I that's how you coped with it. Yeah, they were like, the people around me like, you just do more. 
that like if you could do this, mm. imagine what you could do when it's just you. Mm. So that's how I always tell people, it's like, buzz on what I can do, but this is what I do. Mm. You know, when you hear my stuff, it's mm. like, you know. Um, so that's what was happening in between that. Um, and then, yeah, life happened. Me and Bianca spoke and then also broke mm. the communication. Up until then I did the gig with Red Bull. That was pretty cool. So I'm moving. Mm. I'm moving. I'm producing. I'm, mm. I moved to Durban in mm. 2018. I got to meet a lot of artists there. Mm. Um, and then 2020, I think the year of COVID, a lot of things fell apart for most people. I mm. lost my father. I became a mom. Mm. A lot happened to me. Mm. You know, um, so building forward, mm. I chose to be a, a full-time mother. You know, it was a decision I made that I want to focus on being mm. a full-time mom. So I was out of the game of life and for about two years, mm. you know. And then this year, when the year started, I realized that there was a lot of things that I was not okay with, mm. you know. And one of those things happened to be working with, with the pod zone. So yeah. January came, uh, I called him, right? I first DM'd him, didn't respond. Then I called Usane. I was like, oh, give me number, Eric. Mm. And he's like, ah, oh, cool, there you go. Talk to him. I called him, I was like, yo, bro, can I speak to you? He's like, okay, cool, sure, Come, I'll call you back. And we spoke about maybe for two hours on the phone mm. in Jan. Spoke mm. for about two hours on the phone. And in those two hours we spoke, I told him about how, I first told him why I'm calling so him. So the conversation was two hours? It was two hours long. That's a long conversation. Yeah. Mm. So I said to him, I told him why I'm calling first. It's so you can your, understand. What was your reason? I said to him, there's a certain things that I want to let go of and he's one of them. Mm. So I need to leave, I need to, I need to close that chapter for Bozonge. Mm. There was a lot of trauma, a lot of misunderstanding, but I want to close it properly. Mm. Mm. I don't think that our story has to be this way. Me and you... It doesn't need our, to end like this. No, it doesn't need to end like this. Mkawam, you my senior from school. There's so many things that connect us. Mm. You know, I love you and I appreciate you, but like... I'm not okay. And I thought I was going to be fine. This is like seven years later from when I recorded the song. Mm. But life is different for me now. I'm a mom now, so everything in perspective is different. I was angry for a very long time. Mm. I was angry for a very long time, but I don't want to be anymore. So I want to I want to let it go and take it back to the galaxy. Mm. We spoke and he's like, yeah, I've been thinking about you as well, Sanel. You know, there's a lot of things I did for other people. You know, mm. I've been thinking about, like I've been I've been wondering how I'm going to reach out to you. Because I realized there's so much I've done for people and like you were right there in the crux yeah, of everything. He's known for that though. You know, but <laughs> he's known for <laughs> helping. Yeah, sure. He's everyone's uncle and yes. I know and then Vinny and all of them. So mm. he said that. He's like, and I keep thinking about you and I guess I just didn't know how I was going to approach you. You know. Um, and then I told him detailed grievances of how I feel, uh, personal things about my own life as well. And you know. Mm. Um, and I told him about how I want to let go of this and mm. how I want to heal from it. I was like, you know, I, I want I me and you, you to work be, together. You guys can't be talking like this and not, the emotions couldn't be heating up. Mm. So because you make it sound like it was simple, like a simple <laughs> conversation. conversation. No, it wasn't. I cried. Like, I cried, yeah. he cried. I cried, he cried. I cried, he cried. Mm. You know, um, it was a two hour long conversation. It wasn't, uh, it was Pop hectic. After place. seven years of like making a child together. So literally seven mm. years later, I'm For the first to time, to our we, we, conversation. We, were, we, we were equal. Mm. The first time I heard him, he heard me. Mm. The first time I apologized, he apologized. Mm. The first time he saw me, I saw him mm. again. You know, so we were we were equal. We were human. We were bare. We were vulnerable. Mm. You know, um, and I said to him, "Listen, I want to do a remix of the song Bozong because I think." My story and my journey is, is a story and a journey of a lot of artists in South Africa mm. who've made these amazing big hits and have no claim to them. Mm -hmm. So I want us to do a remix, Bozonga 2.0, seven years later, seven is a lucky number, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and in the music video, I want to direct it because I'm a filmmaker. And in the video, I want to pay homage to all the other female or any artists who've made hit songs but we've never seen their faces. I want mm. to unveil them. Mm. Nice. So because Ooh, that, they the buzz on case. So for example, one female who committed suicide, there's a song, I forgot her name, but there's a song Where put do with Moby Dixon. She mm. killed herself. Oh, oh I know that lady. Yeah. What's yeah. her name? They're yeah. dancing on the Tuma. Yeah. She even yeah. got into the video. Where's yeah. me? They took her that far. They took her to a video. Tuma. She Isn't committed yeah. suicide. Yeah, Tuma yeah, or something. Cool. Yeah. Where put, that was number two song of the year. Two came second in Okoze FM. So 
for me, those are the and stories. And he dated her, didn't he? They were related. Oh, they were related. And they were related. Their connection. Yeah. I remember they had a, a close time. So yeah. there was her. There's even, you know, the song, It's so unfortunate that you can do it. Reason like I can. Yeah. Like, it's my homie, Shane from After. I thought there was a sample. Ah, my nigga. It's not a sample. I went to school with her. South Africa is just uh, I went to school with her. And yeah, it was Charmaine. Yeah, Charmaine. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot. There was wow. a lot of. There's a lot Damn. of artists that in the process. The whole point for me and Ricky is that we we change the narrative. Mm. I said to you, me and you don't have to. Rem- it doesn't have to be sour and like weird. Mm. Between me and you, we are both in the right power. The fact that me and you made Bozong and it gave so much life. Mm. Imagine if we're both like conscious in it and making that decision. Can, we wait, can make a movie. Can I ask you before we go any further? Like, for him to come to terms to talk to you in that way, and for you to be vulnerable like that, did he actually disclose to you what was the change that made him accept your call and actually talk about something? Because uh, for him, it's probably a, a skeleton in the closet. For you, it it's a, sh- a shadow that keeps on following you <laughs> Yo, wherever you go. Bro, thank you. So what <laughs> happened exactly for you, t- for him to actually accept the conversation? I, I'll tell you right now, I don't know. I, I'll tell you, this is when I called him, he... he he was a bit stressed because I'm also quite a raging bull. As hey, a I can see, you know. <laughs> you know. At some point, I remember I bumped into him somewhere. He's like, yeah, I heard Osang phone me. Osang phone. I'm like, no, it's not like that. Yeah, I was just like, Tan. But like, the way things are, but you can't talk to me, you yeah. know. And he, I remember he was like, no, for single, Baba, man, you know. Mm. So it, it was a lot happening on, on both ends, between my end and his mm. end. What does it have to do with anything? And niggas will use this as an excuse. No, no I'm, I, a dad, sorry, I'm, no. A, I'm a mom, I know. <laughs> no, but still, no, no, like, no, so I'm what, a mom. But there's a change. There's a change, there's a change in there. There's there's a change can I tell you something? That was my change. You see, the crazy part, when he did Boss mm-hmm. Zonke, one of the verses, he's like, give, I don't give a fuck about beef. I just had my first kid. I, when mm. I spoke to him, this was like, I'm a mom. And that was literally the breaking point of like, I don't care anymore because mm. single mom. Yeah. So there was something that in, within me that had changed. I was like, because I was also in a space where I was like, I haven't been making anything and I want to make. I don't feel like myself. I've been a mom for like two years straight and I want to feel normal. Mm. But like, I feel like I need to interpret this energy with you, dog, because you know the journey of making music. You know the struggle. You've been at it. You know, and there was a breaking point, and at that breaking point, I was right there with you. So I need you to come and do the same thing I did for you then. That was literally the real. Mm. I had the realest conversation. Mm. I was like, "No shame aside, my nigga. I'm I'm trying to figure it out. I'm getting old. Mm. If it's either if it's a music thing, it's on. So already, Ngoba when I'm first to on as kubegele, then the side kale kale ni shukai. Because I was like, me and you have unfinished business. Mm. So let's do it. So I was like, that's why I was like, let's do a remix. Forget about Bozong Iran. We must tell the story again. And that's why we're paying homage to so anybody how, what, else. What, what was his thoughts on that? Did he... His thoughts was like, okay, cool. No, I'm going to go to the house. So now we speak, right? This is Jan. Um, fast forward. Jan, January, January to this year. This year, 2022. Now, 2022. Now, 2022. now um, we speak in Jan now. And then um, I, I told him, because obviously we hadn't been... Like, we hadn't seen each other in a while. We haven't interacted. So I'm like, listen, I'm going to send you my stuff. I want you to get my vibe. So you can figure out the energy. And I said to him that I want us to work with an up-and-coming producer. The whole point is that you helped me. You helping me. We're going to help someone else. Because mm-hmm. it's a pattern. Mm-hmm. For it's passing it so, on. So we need to find... So the whole thing for Upozonga 2.0, we're going to do... We were going to get a raw producer. So we're going to have an audition. Everyone's going to send a remix of Upozonga. Mm-hmm. But with the whole... Ding, 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 ding. The lay motif has got to stay. But it remix. Ziki yeah. Ziki mm. But uh, just a remix now, seven years later. So I was like, Ricky, for that one, we're going to leave it to the public. We'll pick the best one. Mm. Because we owe it to someone. The whole thing is that, if is that as a geza. So I was like, I don't want no producers that's there. I want someone we don't know. Mm. So we spoke about the theme, the video. We spoke about the details. All on the like, call. We were, mm. well, this is like after the call. So mm. we're communicating, me and him were talking. Did you see each other physically? Or Not were yet. You still At the time on the phone, I'm like, okay, we're talking, talking, talking. And then, um, then Cotton Fest was popping. So mm. I'm like, I'm like, yo, dog. So one of the things he said is like, Sainali, when he apologized, like, Sainali, I'm sorry for everything that happened. There was no reason for me not to be in the video with you. There was no reason for me to not ever perform with you. Mm. Right? So then he's prepping for Cotton Fest. So I'm like, dog, don't you think it'll be so great for the first time me and you seven years later perform for the first time? Because that's how mm. we change the story. Mm. Like, people are going to think whatever, but like, we change the story. So me and you got to perform for the first time. 
for the people that confessed. So mm. he's like, ah, cool, let's go. We on. So, and that was literally maybe two weeks before he passed away. We had that conversation. Um, so he was shooting, I remember the last time I called him or tried to talk to him was when he was shooting the African bank ad. Mm. So I was calling him and he's like, no, send it on set. So I was like, no, listen, I just want you to check your email. something I sent to you for like sound, references, whatever. It's like, this is the vibe I want to do for my set. Um, see how we can... This is Cotton Fest. For Cotton yeah. Fest. It's like February now. It's February mm. now. Mm. Like just like a few weeks before he could, killed himself. So, um, yeah. And then I remember waking up. Funny enough, I just I was with my daughter. Mm. Um, I woke up in the morning, I think at 7.30. My cousin works for Universal Music. Mm. So she calls me. Her sister calls me. Who's your cousin? Who's the intern, my boss? <laughs> she's uh-huh. an intern, but she's like a full intern now. Mm. Universal Music behind the scenes. So shout out, shout out. She calls shout and she's like, yo, hey, I'm a shout out. Oh, yeah, shout out, Zintle. <laughs> Plug, that's how we met, actually. Yeah, that's how I got the gig. Like shout out to her. Yeah. She put me on gigs. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so... Calling and she's like, yo, bruh, like, her older sister, the cold. She's like, yo, I, I think Ricky's passed away. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, no, do do zinle, nang fonela. She's like, dude, he killed himself. I'm like, no, man, that's ridiculous. That's weird. You know, and then obviously the whole day, I'm getting all kinds of phone calls, different emotions from different people who obviously know me mm. and who understand that me and Ricky have been speaking. So now I'm like, I'm like, no way. It's like, guys, no. Like, this is not a real thing. Me and this human being just, like, became okay. Mm. Like, me and him have planned. We've got these things. We're performing Cotton Fest together. We're making Bozonka together. It's like all these things that are supposed to happen. Mm. You know? And then, you know, obviously, I'm in a confusing space. Sign. I, I, I try to maneuver through the space. And then, um, somehow, one of my relatives, family member of mine, happened to be at Ricky's funeral somehow. Long story, I don't want to really connect that link. Mm. But reconnects me and Bianca again. Mm. So me and Bianca call, but because me and Bianca have had a relationship, but I haven't spoken to like two, three years. And she's like, oh, last day, oh, bad. Ooh, ooh, Ricky told me you guys were talking. So she knows what's happening. She knows we were talking. The person can yeah, she knows what's up. Mm. And she's like, yeah, like, you know, I'm like, no, listen, tell me you're good. So now I'm obviously trying to like, at this position in my mind, I was prepping for cotton fair. So my team is like, listen, so right now I'm with Blue Creatives, which is a, a, a media music company that's based in the South Coast of Durban. I'm dropping my EP September with them. Mm. Um, so shout out, shout out. yeah, shout out to Jove and Blue. Shout out, shout out, shout out. So they're like, yo, bro, like you gotta deal with this. You need to deal with this. So talk to Bianca. She knows what's up, and you gotta be a confess. Who else is gonna do that song? And then crazy enough, guys, I get some weird person fan not weird but a fan I don't know if Ricky's or mine DMs me mm. on Instagram and he's like yo Sunny Ellen last year I'm, I've been looking for you for years mm. and I finally found you I just want you to know that I'm sorry and I want you to know that right now South Africa needs you and you're the most you're very important right now in this moment like we want to be remembering that that first big hit. Mm. So we love you. You're here. We got you. We love mm. you. We see you. Mm. So I was like, I was like, that was such a weird. So after that, like, I was like, you know what? Hollered at Bianca. I was like, yo, B, dog. Like, me and Makada, we spoke about this. She's like, okay, cool. You want to perform? Mm. How many days? Mm. Even. She's like, how long? I'm like, what? Birthday? She's like, yeah, you can perform on birthday. So we prepped basically for Cotton Fest. Um, Did you perform the song at Cotton Fest? Twice. Yeah. Twice. Mm. As a tribute. For the tribute set twice. Mm, I wanted to Saturday and Sunday. NK was also there. <laughs> so, so, so. Yeah, we, we yeah. We discussed yeah. The, the fact that some artists were not like getting paid because some of them vowed to, to do it for free. Yeah. For Ricky. So, I mean, like, did you fall under those brackets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so, I think, um, I, I don't know about the other brackets, but I got paid for Cotton Fist. For my set, I got paid. For the tribute, I, I mean, it's it's long overdue. I, it is. Yeah. Seven years. <laughs> I mean, they booked a hotel for me. Bianca killed it. Like she had a hotel. She booked my flights mm. from Durban. I, I was I was good. I was good. I was respected, and you know, um, I think everybody has their own story and moments to do with it, whatever. But because even within the tribute set, like the, obviously there's. Uh, there's the cats, uh, Blackie and Raspy and all of them on the Sundela. Because mm. even during the rehearsals, it was like they come on and I was the last person to be part of the set. Mm. So 
you know, even amongst the guys, for me, I felt like, because obviously, I'm like, I'm an older cat, you know, mm. and I've been out of the game for like two years. So I'm like, Ugh, it's me. And nobody knows. That's the thing. So everybody's mm. like, who's this hands? Everybody's yeah. like confused. It's like, you why? You the boss on his shit. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Do you think that contributed to like his depression? Just like the broken relationships that he no, had in the industry? Don't ask me that. I mean, it, it could be possible because you also made up with like Casper, right? Before he... Apparently. And made, apparently. Uh, there's a lot, a lot more people too. Yeah, it's not just them. Even Sorry. like Didi as well. And I remember I spoke to Didi. Even Didi Monster, says, no? Didi Monster, he was like... Because Didi's like Crazy. a fan of it. Like, well, I've known him for a while. And he came, me and him spoke. And he's like, yeah. Ricky, he, they went on a drive together like in Jan. Mm. I think after I spoke to him, I think Bro. Ricky was in Cape Town and he was telling him. So me and Didi met in the streets, you know, when he was like one of Ricky's youngins. So he Didi didn't know that me and Ricky came from like after. So he's like, dude, mm. so he's telling me you guys have known each other for so long. Like, mm. let's scale. I'm mm. like, yeah, but he was my senior, you know. Mm. Um, so I can, I know because I'm an artist as well and I know that space. I reached out to Ricky because I wasn't okay as well at the time. Right. I'm not even mm. going to lie. I re- Part of the reason why I reached out to him because I needed healing. Mm. You know, and closure. And closure. Mm. And, you know, I'm very grateful for for him finally, you know, mm. opening like up. opening up to me. And, 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 and I finally felt, I finally, like, the, the Ricky that I knew, mm. the Ricky that I know beyond all the chaos and everything else and the labels mm. and all the publishers and... Young king, that happened, bro. It's like um, fair, it's long, mazzy, and, you know, mm. because it was a whole very warm, like a big brother. Mm. For me, that's my like experience of Ricky's feeling safe mm. around him, mm. like you know, feeling like you know, dope as well and mm. like cool, but like always feeling safe mm. Mm. and protected, you know. So, I, I, I was, I was able to be vulnerable, and and I'm happy that he also was able to be vulnerable with me, you know, because as much as. I can say what his side, but I was also mad at him, and I know how anger can be an energy, mm. you know. And that's why I had and to apologize. Like, the, mm, I was, the whole situation. Yeah, it can cloud the whole situation. And I'm sorry that I was mad at you, but I love you, you know. And I want us to do what we were meant to do, mm. what we were meant to do. We did it, but like, let's do it the way we want to do it. Do you feel like you had to? You could have reached out earlier, so you had more time to spend with him. That's how I felt during Cotton Fest. Because during Cotton Fest, like, it was, like, a uh, heavy withdrawal. You know, it's like, you're going through different spaces. I started seeing his whole, like, genius plan. Mm. I saw his whole plan. Like, it's like I literally got the whole manuscript and, like, it overwhelmed me. Mm. You know, so the first day of the set, I performed my own music at the better stage, 15 minutes set, and I did Bozonka as well there because I had to. And then I had the tribute at night, at 10 mm. o'clock, with the rest of the other artists. So Sunday was different because... I only had to perform late at night. So the energy was like very different for me, very emotional that I, I was like, I actually wish you were here. Sunken yeah. at that point. Like, yeah, sunk in. I was like, I wish you were here. And like, I wish that we could actually, we could have done this together. And I was mad and I was hurt and I was upset mm. and I was sad, you know. And I, I, I desperately wanted him to mm. like, I wanted to conjure him. Mm. But his energy was with me. That's mm. especially on Sunday in particular. Mm. I could definitely agree that um, um, and yeah, you know, but I'm grateful that me and him had that moment of peace before anything. Mm. You know, it's, Some people it's tricky. Lose the Some chance. people they lose the chance, yeah. you know. And I don't know, I think it's it's the universe, it's God, it's mm. me, it's him. Mm. It's all of it, you know. But I'm grateful that we had that chance to literally just be like, yo, prophet, mm. Everything else, I, I can't, you know, because it, his way of passing was very painful for me. Mm. It was like, instant. broke my heart. It Some very... of us just feel like he will be walking past or yeah. driving past his Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Driving his Porsche in Brown one day. Like, I still have, like, I've got, like, um, so I was fortunate enough, um, Benjamin had worked with him for the previous Cotton Fest. Benjamin, the, the colored the, guy. The producer, yeah. I don't know who's colored, but he's like... Benjamin, Benjamin. Yeah, no more Zach Benjamin. Zoda, and, Zach yeah. Zoda. Nah, not, not the Benjamin. Producer. Travis Scott Benjamin. No, yeah, he's got hair, but not... Yeah. The Ross, colored. Is he kind of got black? Yeah. But he's like a director, music director. He nah, did the Cotton Fest. It's not, no, it's not, so uh, he not, did, not he's, the same Benjamin. Hmm? Zach Zoda. So he did... Benjamin. Not His Benjamin. name is Benjamin. Not Benjamin. Not, not Benjamin. <laughs> no. Zach Zoda. Yeah. Oh, that's the same person? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, I know. Yeah. I met that's, him. That's his street name. So he was, mm. he did the tribute direction for Pozonke and I was fortunate enough for him to send me 
Ricky's last this previous year's show, the set. So I still mm. have it on me, you know. Um and yeah, it was crazy because he sang it. Yeah. He sang Bazonke. It was so weird because I'm like, oh, I would I'm and you're gonna go, <laughs> you're gonna go do what I was doing. Mm. But it's fine because at the time I think he finally the energy also sank into him. Eesh. You know, so um I will always I will always feel because for the longest time I did not resonate or connect myself. I, I never owned my voice. Right. That was one of the biggest things. So the most grateful moment I'll always appreciate is Bianca trusting me and trusting Ricky's non presence is for me to be on that stage and, mm. and, 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 and and hone and give that last respect and for me to own my own voice again because so, I didn't. I was traumatized. But, I was afraid of that voice. I didn't want to. I was like, Ugh, but by owning it, where where do you stand with voice on you right now? <laughs> yeah, like how do you when 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 it plays now? Because I'm sure before when it played, I'm talking you, about you used to I'm talking cringe. about serious chat. I'm not talking about emotional chat. No, now I jam. I'm like, talking yo, about yo, like yo, yo, ownerships yo. and like. Like oh, I'll tell yeah. you right now, uh, for that side, you. I'll tell you right now, I can't I can't clarify that yet. It's still a conversation. Is that what you say? I'm not ready for that conversation because Ricky just passed away. That's the kind of person I am, right? Mm. You saw his album got taken down on streaming platform. I know, platform. I know. I, actually, actually, you in that guys, album. I saw yeah. it on your platform. And Damn, Chuck shout Pies. out to us. Chuck Damn. Pies. I saw it from yeah, you guys' it's, platform. But it's back, I think. Yeah, so... Yeah, apparently it's back. I don't want to... Like I said, for you me... You want to engage in that conversation. You're still not yet. digesting. Not yet, because I'm also... Like, I'm in the studio. I'm working on my own music right now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into my own sense. But like my, the biggest closure for me was ex- is, is 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 claiming my own voice again, and mm. I got to claim it on that stage mm. on both nights, mm. you know. And I, dog, it's your bro just shouting out everyone that you know. <laughs> shout out, shout out. I'm just happy you got your closure. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like that's the most it's important crazy. thing. And yeah. that was like the trauma. I was like, oh my god. So I, it, it's ridiculous. I still can't even believe that's like the concept of reality of things. But I'm glad that I got the closure. You mm. know. And the closure has like honed like an amazing energy because crazy enough, when I performed the Cotton Fest on the beta stage, I so what I decided yeah. to do, which yeah, was crazy, right. mm. I recorded. Uh, soon, yeah, almost done. Yeah, yeah, I recorded a, a new song of mine called Umsind. So I decided that on Monday I'm performing Saturday mm. Cotton Fest. On Monday I'm, I'm going to record a, a track from scratch. Mm. Um, called up one of my producers, Jaden Patel, rest in peace. Um, and he gave me like the most hybrid sound I can ever like. I like everything. I like anything that does not sound like it comes from this planet. Mm. It either mm. comes from underneath or above mm. or on the side. Amara, like, are you fine with aliens now? Huh? Are you okay with no, aliens? No, I'm good. I, mean, I know I'm a descendant of them now. So <laughs> I'm fine. I know I come from them. Uh, I so, am not so um, be- before, because the sun is about to, the night is about to fall. And it's, I want to no, ask you about the, the, what the are your thoughts on, on Gogo Mawin. <laughs> Gogo Mawin. Yeah. How? Um, I don't watch much um, I don't know how South African in. television. <laughs> I've seen her. I, well, well, I'll the say, witchcraft. Is, is, are you into witchcraft? Do you understand? So I'll tell you this. I'll tell you if you're going to... Maybe you, you. I can try and answer your question if you phrase it. What do I think about the, the, the rise of ancestral energy around? So I want to come back to Kredo Moto. Yo, right? finally. That's yeah. what I want to get to. Which is going to connect. So I'm cool with Kredo Moto and I met him. I was with how the band Revolt. Uh, pardon? How old were you? I was 2014. I was 24. Okay. Mm. So, Umkulu, I was with the band Near Revolt. We did a song called Vusamazul, which is the second name that I wrote the hook for. Yeah. And one of my producers at the time thought it was a great idea for us to take one of Credit Musu's voice uh, videos on YouTube and use them on the track. So we took one of his clips where he says my people could not see the stars and mm. that's when I come start in. that's when I kick in so it's like white boy cradle then it's me mm. so we needed to get rights to use it to release the music so my team is all white at the time they were like trying to get a hold of cradle couldn't and then eventually like you speak to his family I spoke to his wife for a year they saw you they're like you know what like, no, you connect do something about your skin <laughs> <laughs> like the people can't hear. So I speak to Zaf for a year. She's like, Funan, I don't understand. What do you want? I'm mm. like, we made a song with your husband and we just want to get rights. We want to know how much you want. Mm. Whole year, after a year, she calls me and she's like, listen, Tati Lunga, my granddaughter, mm. she will help you. She's like a custodian of a lot of our things here. So I call Lunga Mutua in the peak when Barack Obama was in the country. 
So she's like, ah, I'm tired of speaking to Barak's PA. I'm like, no, mm. sorry, Usain. I'm not Barak. Mm. I don't know who Barak is. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah. I'm an artist. I'm just trying to get right. So mm. me and her speak on the phone for two hours once again. Look. Mm. And then I meet her. She invites me to her home. She tells me about her family. And she tells me that her, the wife, Fukuoko, they knew I was coming because they said when she finds a stream in Kuruman, yeah, there's a girl who's going to come and wants to tell stories about Mko. Mm. So she's like, we're waiting for you. You're mm. finally here. So How me, long did they like know? Like two years. I don't know, but like it's like, it I've been speaking two, two to years. this woman for two years. Who Goku, who found the stream? Who knew I was coming? She was just like, mm, <laughs> I won't go Yeah, she was mm. waiting you. Not yet. <laughs> So, um, and then they're like, well, Umkulu was here yesterday, but we only called you. They were like, messy, like it was like, not yet. Yeah. So then one of his students, Ukredo, one of Credo's students, mm. um, had, was from the Val, Ubetwa. So mm. he and asked me to come and shoot, because I'm a cinematographer, to shoot in Twasa, okay, and coming out. Mm. Come through to the Twasa situation. I meet him cool for the first time. I figure is Anu says Zinye Bangene, but I don't meet him officially. And then the following day, I meet him. Crazy enough, like I meet him, but like not officially as well. So I'm like literally insane. I'm like, oh my god, like mm. I'm gonna die. This is so amazing. Um, and then fast forward the following day. So Umzugululunga is like, listen, you need to spend time with Mkulu, and you need to get permission for what you're trying to do from him directly. So come back tomorrow here to the Val. Mm. And then you can talk to him. So I'm in, I come back to Joburg. Everybody, I tell my homies, they're like, oh my God, we want to come with you. You want to stay yeah. So I, I, get, I was like, so I was praying about you. You got the car, you come with me. Who else, you know? Mm. So we go to the Val. And when we get there, Ulunga was like, the craziest thing, Sanil, I want to warn you and your friends is that you won't be able to speak, but he'll tell you exactly what you need to hear. Mm. We get there. I walk in with my friends. I was the only female, like maybe six niggas. And then he's sitting on the couch there, we're sitting here. And there's a little table here in front of him. And Umkengi, Umkengi is like a thick book. Mm. A thick, like encyclopedia manuscript, like looking ancient. Mm. It was in front of him in pins and cookie pins and paints. And he's dressed in like these like scarves and he's carrying a huge anchor. Anka is the sign of... Uh, the female organ and also the sign of life. Mm. Yes. Like it looks like a cross. But like a, a cross gold one the... with mm. hieroglyphic, three hieroglyphic symbols mm. on the edge. A gold, a pure gold ankh this big. And he's just literally just spinning this thing. So for like 20 minutes, everyone froze and I don't know what to say. So I'm begging me. I said, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going you got the rights to use his voice. You don't right. have to pay us. Don't mm. worry. Mkulu is like, you can do whatever you want. So Ngibong, and he's like, how pants? He starts talking to us. He's like, ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that man was a totty. First word. <laughs> and he starts laughing. <laughs> That's the laughing. first thing he said. He starts laughing. He's like, that man. And then he, I got, like, and we all start getting light. So we went through a conversation. That's crazy. <laughs> but in the spacing of the conversation, he, he spoke about the time that will come. So Umkulu speaks about the time it will come where which means that our the the roots of the earth will they'll rise again. And when they rise again, it's not the death, but the rise of the ancestors. Right? So he's like they're going to rise. But when they rise, it's not because we are confused. They were they're rising in traumatized, confused bodies. Yeah. So that's why some of the information and signal you you going through, we're going through this wave and energy of all these. Different is Anusi, Amatonga, Abangoma, Inyanga, all kinds of spiritual entities that are existing in this phase and right having now. these powers. Yeah. But because some of the interpretation, they are entering bodies that need healing and they're entering bodies that are traumatized and entering bodies that need a cleansing, you know. Hence why sometimes the communication and interpretation will come out as wrong and messed up. But it is time. They are here. They are back. It is only... It's just the beginning, guys. Like, yeah. literally. It's mm. about to get hectic. So, like, do, you, do you think that Sangomas are more in touch with the African spirituality more than the regular Can I tell you person? something? Sango... Like... So, in households, in homes, every home, in this... In the, it means, it means every single home and clan mm. had... It's... it's Like, you've guys seen Game of Thrones, right? In all these English series. Yeah. There's a squire. There's a... There's different... Uh, there's a wizard. There's mm. what? So in your clan and in my clan and in our clan at home, there's go there has to be a doctor, there's somebody who has to be able to pray and heal. There's somebody who has to be able to go into a forest and come back with medicine to heal 
Yeah. There has to be someone who knows who can who knows the le- the liturgy and the cultural formation of how things are done in this home. Mm. So that is how we continue. Remember African literature and African history is all about literal. Indaba my children from Nkuku. Mm. Indaba my right. children. Right. It is a literal history. Mm. I tell you. Mm. You tell him. He mm. tells him. I tell you. So it's history. And I tell my children. Yeah. That's how we keep it. Mm. That's why we sat in the circle, like how we're chilling now. Mm. What we're doing now, we, we are just, we're acting exactly our ancestors intended like, yeah. us to be. We are our ancestors' wildest dream because we're moving in a, in a virtual wave as well. It's multiplying beyond just, but it's the same energy. Mm. So that is how we continue to move forward. It's, mm. it's the literal part. That's why I'm an audiovisual artist. I am a sangoma. I have a gift of ancestors, but I'm not, I can't heal you with herbs. I can't heal you with praying and putting hands over you, giving you water. And snakes and stuff. You know, but I, my gift is memory. There is snakes. <laughs> no, I, I dream of snakes as well. I've dreamt of two big snakes before. I had one dream where I had, I dreamt of two big snakes, a white one and a brown one. And I go back into my grand's house, I come out, my yellow one was missing. And I looked for the yellow one and I found it next door in a big tire eating avocados. It was so weird. Eat and avocados. I was so happy. My snake, yeah. And eating in avocados. Cool. Yeah, eating avocados. So in your in cool. life or in your dream? In my dream. So I don't have snakes in your life, but in my dreams, I do have. Miriam Akeba also mentioned herself. She's Sangoma, the one of the song, the one of voice. Mm. We all have different interpretation. The one of song, Ingoma. Sangoma. That's why we need... It makes a lot of sense. It's all vibrations. When God Mm. created the earth, he said, let there be light. There's vibration. That's why when you, if you put a speaker here, Obegin Tabat, Izokita. Movement. Sound commands movement. Mm. Let there be light. Let there be life. That is my gift. Is memory. Is to remember. That's why my first single I did consciously by myself was called Back to the Future. Because the only way I can go forward is to go back. Mm. Can't go forward if I don't go back. That's why I had to speak to Ricky. Yeah. So I can go forward because I was not okay. Mm. I can't. I have mm. to go back to the future. So, yeah. I no to I'm a historian, I'm a nostalgia, I'm, my gift is memory. Mm. And my gift is memory for every single black human being and every human being that exists under the sun. Mm. It's to remind ourselves of who we are and my, it's for my own being as well, to remind myself. That's how I give it back. I give my gift back because the only way you become, you have to give your gift back. Mm. Otherwise, you can't yeah. live. You can be selfish point? with it. Mm. What's the point? I want to know. You I want to know. Do you think musicians have a responsibility to bring awareness or light consciousness to the general public? You have public? to. You have to. There's the, the whole point. If Isabelo Sako, Isabelo is your calling, right? Yeah. If Isabelo Sako, if you answer the calling of something, then you must. Then you must. Reciprocate that echo. What's the point? Because it's nice to be like, oh, cool, I've got rants and nards, bitches and hers, let's get lit. You know what I'm but saying? But if you're in the power of all, like, 300, you guys have like 350,000 subscribers on Instagram, and God knows what you guys have, but you're in the position for people to hear you, of course, you must bring life into it and light. So it is your, it is your responsibility, not just as an artist, as a human being, right. if you have the attention of the masses. That's why I didn't vote. Mm. If I am in the responsibility of mm. commanding the world and moving things to a greater height, then I must deserve it. Mm. Because the whole point, every single day, a friend of mine said to me, is like, every single day you wake up, the first thing you must remember is that the devil is right at the door. Not anywhere, not outside. Right <laughs> at, your door. at your door. At your door. <laughs> at your doorstep. So every single day, it is a fight of good and bad. So if you want, that's why I say to I am my gift is my gift on music. Memory. My bam is memory, mm. because I went through a journey of reminding myself who I was. I have to share that experience with everyone else as well. Right. Mm. I'll tell you this: note. you do have a big brain. <laughs> <laughs> like she's really smart, though. Okay. <laughs> I would like to. I, I like, spent, but, uh, <laughs> I, God, I spent most of my day. time in high school, and people were trapping like. Like, I, my favorite things to do was, like, to go to the museum, the art gallery, and the cinema. Mm. Mm. And the amazing. cypher, the darkest thing I did was, like, cypher mm. Everybody's big. Yeah. That was, like, the edge. But mm. for me, that's where I spend most of my time, you know. But like I said, 
we all we're all different vessels here to do different things, you know. Yeah. And I just answered to my calling at a very young age. I agreed. Ngavuma, you to avuma ni bo si avuma. Sabelo. Yeah, avuma sabelo sa ku. Oh here, you guys are all gift. No one can tree go. No one can izangom. Si she tsong kela si zangom. Cause zangom is is commanding. It's right. commanding. Your right. voice is power. Like mm. literally, let there be light. Kuzo mm. kanya ba. Let there be darkness. Since like, in my own king, mm. you know. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for thank you for, for gracing us oh with your God, presence. Was so much fun, girl. No, no, I literally feel like I've, you've been we've been <laughs> we've been blessed and touched by like the outer world. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I recently found out as well that. I come from all five Nguni descendants of South yeah. Africa, of Yo. Africa. Mm. Recently, I found out. And I know this is like usually stuff people Big really five. know, but like yeah. I knew that's how I was like, oh, maybe that's why I, I kept dreaming about aliens and aliens. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, it I know. Makes sense. You, you come from like alien descendants and like water spirits as well, like mermaids, mm. like Atlantans, mm. you know. So it makes sense why I, I was born and I was just like, oh my God, like please give Africa a chance, give her a break. Give her a moment. And the same dream Umkulu had is like, to the whole entire world, if you gave us another chance, if you rewrote history or you reversed the time, we'll show you what we're made of. Because we're fucking great. All of us. Guys, we're so epic. Let's go be great, guys. We're so yeah, I epic. I feel like on that note, we we're can so end epic. the part. <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're only introducing her at the end, you know. Yeah. Ula star. You know, you're amazing. One of the greatest. <laughs> and you your brother's the best hype EP man coming ever. out soon, and guys. The best hype September, man. we <laughs> drop in. Blue. And EP coming out September. Say, do, you, do you know what I want to say to you? EP gonna drop. EP gonna drop. EP gonna drop. September time. EP gonna drop. EP gonna drop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in touch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're only introducing you at the end because what? To go to the future. We have you to go, go to the back. back. <laughs> <laughs>